choice then. They, they can decline it. You see the, the team coming on the field right now as they're getting ready for the kickoff. Let's go to our man on the sideline. Paul Stewart is with us once again and back in normal voice. Paul, let's talk about the Wolfpack offense. They've got two guys who are dinged a little bit, Kenny Miner and Jeff Hadwick. How are they? Are they both going to start? Good news from the Wolfpack locker room, Dan. Both of those players will start. Jeff Hadwick last week, of course, was uh, limited to just long snapping duty. He's going to give it a shot. Uh, team doctor Tim, Jim Greenwald said he's going to keep a close eye on Jim on uh, Hadwick's right patellar tendon. However, Kenny Miner will start and play for the first time in three games, and you know how important that is to the Wolfpack running game to get something established right away. So good news for the Pack. Two of their key guys are going to start. As we said, the Wolfpack will kick off, so Shea is lined up. Abu Wilson is deep along with Craig Miller. Get a good shot of Shea. The right footer comes forward. Wilson will return it. He steps in front of Miller. Nice cut by Abu. Will get him out near the 26-yard line, but it looked like Danny was going to be caught back inside his 20. He really never got behind the wedge there, and he just kind of did all the work himself, worked his way through, and got up to the 27-yard line. The bat on defense will have James Canada, David Miller, Julian Yearwood, and Tawan Hall in the front four. The linebackers, Miles Crawford and Porter. The corners, Guider and Hassan, and the safeties, Johnson and Overby. Patrick Mullins, a 6'4 quarterback up under center. On the ground, Wilson first carry. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. I don't either. And the Wolfpack defense is very good against the rush, and it'll be interesting to see how well they do today against the conference's top running back, Abu Wilson. It'll be strength against strength today. Get a look at the, uh, the backfield. Harrison, a surprise starter in the receivers. We thought that, uh, that Turner would get the call. There you see the offensive line. Second down, second and still 10 to go. Lone back is Wilson, they give it to him again. Picking his way, James Canada it grabs him and brings him down at the 30-yard line. So that'll bring up a third and long for the Aggies. Very important right now for the Wolfpack defense to stuff that rush because they want to force Utah State into the pass. They don't think that Patrick Mullins, the Utah State quarterback, is that good. And if they can force Utah State to pass, they think they can win this game. The defensive unit, as we just introduced to you for the University of Nevada. Talking about their linebackers, talking to Kenny Wilson this morning, he's saying, I hope our guys aren't too aggressive against Wilson. They wait for things to come to them. So far, they have. It's a third and seven for the Aggies at their own 30. Again, a, a three-step drop. They throw complete to Wilson. That's his 29th, uh, 30th catch this year, and he will get out and have the first down. He dropped the ball right at the end of that, but the official on the field is saying that he dropped it after he was already down on the playing field. So Utah State will retain possession first at 10 for their 40-yard line, and Abu Wilson shows how valuable an asset he really is. I mean, here's a guy who catches the ball out of the backfield, who returns kicks, who returns punts, is also on the punting team. Yeah, I thought it was Wilson, too. It was number four, Alexander, who they sprinted out on it. But it was, uh, Kevin Alexander made the catch for the first down, and Wilson is back in the lineup. My, my fault to steer you wrong, Dana, but a first down for the Aggies, their first. This time, Alexander comes in motion to the right side. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen, and Wilson trying to go wide left. Got a good block downfield. Guider come up, got a piece of him, and then... From the middle, Crawford knocks him down, but not before Wilson gets the first down. And Aaron Frazier, the wide receiver on that side, did a super job of getting the block down on Deshaun Miles and springing Wilson around the left side that time. There's the guy you see, Abu Wilson, goes to the sideline. He had a very serious knee injury in 93 that kept him out the entire season. The youngster from San Francisco, though, they, they say is fully healed. We get another good look at it. Watch the left side of your screen. Number 82 makes the great block on Deshaun Miles, and that gave him plenty of running room around the left side. On first and 10, Miller throws over the head of Alexander. Guider coming quickly. Oh, that one was not catchable. And there you get an idea of what I was talking about with the quarterback, Patrick Mullins, the junior quarterback threw high to a wide open Kevin Alexander. In fact, they're not even sure if Mullins is the guy who will guide this team next year. There's talk of bringing in a junior college transfer or maybe a hotshot freshman to run this team next year. Mullins really hasn't gotten the job done this year. Well, a lot of people thought it was going to be Wells who was going to be the, the heir apparent to the job was here last year, but when they brought in Mullins from Georgia Military College, 
He played so well in the spring game that he has stayed in there. Out of the shotgun this time on a second and ten. They run their quads, four wide receivers. Wide open. That is Alexander. Touchdown. Well, Nevada, you'd think, Dana, their defense would have seen enough four wide receivers, quads as they call them. That time, Alexander just running a sprint down the seam, and Mullins picked him off, and nobody defensively was near Kevin Alexander. And a same old story up front, not much of a pass rush on Patrick Mullins, not to say that it was the defensive line's fault that time, because Alexander was wide open. But if the Wolfpack defense is going to have success, they're going to have to put some pressure on Mullins today. And already they're on their heels. Mike Anur for the extra point. Left footer has it up and good. So in their first possession, the Aggies go the length of the field after a couple third down conversions. They lead 7-0. We'll return to Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah after this timeout. Hi friends, Jones West Ford has over 400 four-wheel drives available. And you bet you can make a great buy on one. Take a look at these examples. This is a 1989 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive for only $89.83. 89 Ford F-150 for only $69.83. 92 Mitsubishi pickups, only $59.83. That's right, over 400 four-wheel drives available. No one's got the selection, no one has our prices. Come see us. Okay, you two, I want you to listen up. I love you guys. I want you to have the best. That's why I went for the Whopper. Extra pickles, no onions, because that's what you want, because I love you guys. I mean it. The plain broiled Whopper for only 99 cents. Every day at Burger King. Now that's getting your burgers worth. Only the best. I don't care what it costs. Dad, wasn't this Whopper only 99 cents? Value's an important concept. That's why I'm doing this for you. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. We're back in Logan, Utah. You see the score. Utah State leading 7-0. They get a bomb to Alexander, and now the Wolfpack will get their hands on the ball for the first time offensively. So the track meet has already started. A lot of people predicting a very high-scoring affair, and Utah State unloads on their first possession. Watch Deshaun Miles, number 30, on the left side of your screen. Why is he one-on-one -on -one with Utah State's best wide receiver, Kel Kevin Alexander? He can't cover Alexander. He's wide open. I mean, he just ran right by Deshaun. He should not be on Kevin Alexander. So that's how they do it. They go 73 yards in six plays, a little more than two minutes, two minutes and 28 seconds to be exact. Alex Van Dyke is the deep man for the University of Nevada. Mike Anor with a good high, long end over end kick. Al, uh, Van Dyke two yards deep will down it. Nevada will start at their own 20. So we thought we'd see a lot of offense, and now Nevada's got to prove that their offense is every bit as you see. Mike Maxwell has done extremely well so far this year. In the last few games, he has been red hot. He had 552 yards passing last week. It was all on his shoulders. There's the senior quarterback. There's McHenry, no excuse me, Dana, but McHenry, they expect to go to an awful lot today. And he came up huge last week, Van Dyke, of course. This guy... Last couple of games, averages over 200 yards a game. First pass, first play is to go to Van Dyke. There he is alone on the right side, overthrown. The coverage by Hudson. And we have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. I didn't see what it was, but uh, there is a flag at the 20-yard line, generally in the area where they call uh, offensive holding or offsides on the defense. The Wolfpack had scripted the first few plays, and as we said, they were going to go to Van Dyke, which they did unsuccessfully. They were going to go to Kenny Miner on the second play, but let's see what the, the penalty declined. We're we'll going to look at the offensive line. There's Darren Thorpe, one of the anchors. He is on the strong side of tackle. Hadwick, uh, Paul mentioned that he is back after two weeks ago falling on his knee. The defense, Robinson, uh, Danilo Robinson, not very big. He's just six feet and one, 233, but he is so quick. And Gill, one of those important linebackers we talked about in the pregame. Here comes Miner, as scripted, coming left, cuts back, and that shows his ankle's not too bad, as he will get five tough yards over the 25-yard line. It'll be interesting to see how his ankle holds up over the duration of this contest. He was chomping at the bit to get into that UNLV game last Saturday, but they didn't want us, they did not want to use him if they didn't have to. Get a look at the secondary. There's the safety, the free safety, Wagner. And he does play center field back there. You will see him on camera. He's alone back there, and he will run to the ball. Good end zone shot to take a look at Mike Maxwell with a third now and about five and a half to go. The catch made, they got the first down, and you see David Gill on top. 
We mentioned how well will he be able to drop back into coverage. He did so well there. Sean Coleman from behind made the initial stop. And they moved Gill all around on the defensive side. He started at the line of scrimmage that time, and then right before the snap, he dropped back into coverage like a normal linebacker would. And there, he dropped back far enough to make the stop. You see Chris Alt walking the sideline, bundled up, but it is pleasant. Game time, temperature 36 degrees, but the sun's out, and uh, it's, as they say, great football weather. First down, Wolfpack, they just get it to the 35-yard line. Maxwell throw that left-handed. I have Dana. I don't know that I've seen him do that this year. Rolling out to his left, couldn't turn because the defense had pressure from the backside. He tried to go ambidextrous, and that's a problem when you have a right-handed quarterback and he rolls out to the left side like that. He couldn't turn his body, right his body, because he had a defensive player right on his heels. Watch this. He couldn't turn his body. That was guilt in chase right there. So he got to had to throw that left-handed. Maybe he just threw that away at the feet of Ken Miner, so it would be incomplete instead of taking the loss. We have talked about the middle capabilities of Mike Maxwell. That time he gets out of trouble. Whatever he did, he threw it away, got rid of it, and no loss. Second and ten. Maxwell slipping and going for Van Dyke. Nice defensive play by Hudson. Hudson had Van Dyke when they were on the other side of the field. We'll take a good look, see if he's flip-flopping and following Van Dyke everywhere. Hudson almost had a chance to pick that one off. Van Dyke just got his hand in there. You'll see coming from the right side of your screen, number 27 is Mike Hudson. Already has one interception on the season, and he was in good position to make another one here, but Van Dyke just stepped in front at the last second and knocked it away. The pack now with a third and 10. Utah State leading 7-0. They went uh, 73 yards on their opening drive. Nevada with the ball for the first time. Blitz up the middle by Gill. He's picked up. There's a fingertip catch by McHenry. We said they would go to him a lot. He's just shy of midfield. See where they get the spot. If it does, the nose of the ball should be very close to midfield. And that will be a Wolfpack first down. The Wolfpack converting on almost 54% of their third down conversions, and they've hit two for two already on this opening drive. Steve McHenry, the offensive player of the week last week against UNLV, despite the big numbers by Maxwell and Van Dyke, he made some huge catches over the middle, and he's already come up big here. McHenry gets to the 50-yard line. That is his 50th catch this year. Here comes Miner left again. Cooper trying to get out front, lead a block. And David Gill chases him down, but after a five-yard gain. Ken Miner looks pretty healthy on that right ankle. He's carried the ball a few times, and so far, so good. Well, look at him now, though, as he gets up. He's limping a little bit. Boy, let's hope that he didn't turn that. He's going to try to stay in there. The way he's shaking his head, his body language tells you he's feeling a twinge on that ankle right now. And the Wolfpack needs him. Last week against UNLV, they only had 47 net yards against UNLV. They really need a healthy Ken Miner in the lineup today. But he doesn't look healthy after that last play. Second and five. Flag is down. That nice cut by Kenny Miner there. And he will get to the 32-yard line. They're going to call offsides against Utah State on that play. The right defensive end lined up offsides in the neutral zone. I was watching Miner when he was going downfield with the quick moves. He wasn't putting the intensity in the cutbacks. Maybe we'll see it here that he normally does. And that was indeed the call offsides. Let's watch Ken Miner go to work here. Now, he is known for his cutbacks. He really has great moves when he's healthy. And Right there, he didn't look too bad, but you're right, he's a little bit tentative, light on his feet. When he puts that right foot down and has to make the cutoff, that, that's where he seems to come up a little bit. Consciously or not, he lets up. Let's see how long he can go. And Nevada declines the offsides penalty, so it'll be first and 10 from the 31, and they're on the march now. Another good look at Kenny Miner, the flag going down. See that right foot, he doesn't make that real solid cut on that right foot. At the Aggie 31, first and 10. Again, the drag by the wide receiver Van Dyke. He has his first catch on a short game. They give, well, they give him a pretty good spot. Actually, I, I think they gave him two or three yards more than he got. Nevada loves to work that underneath stuff to Van Dyke and then burn you long. So they'll work him underneath, 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 and then go long. Maxwell looking to his right the entire time and went off to the safety valve. Van Dyke was not his intended receiver, but came to him when he couldn't find anybody else open on the right side. Give him a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Again, Miner. Got out of the tackle of Green. Oh, boy, there's a great move on a cutback. So maybe he's feeling a lot better. He's inside the 15-yard line. 
He did. He juked number 51, Kenyatta Green, the middle linebacker. Kenyatta Green had him in his sights and had him for a loss, but Miner just sidestepped him and made all the yardage himself that time. Beautiful job, and that is what Ken Miner adds to the offense. That's something that they didn't have. There's 51 on the right side of your screen. Kenyatta Green had him, in fact, almost had him wrapped up, and Ken Miner did a super job of just juking everybody. In fact, Sean Coleman, number 31, was also a victim of his moves. It was Wagoner, the free safety, who finally brought him down. First down, Wolfpack at the 12-yard line of the Aggies. Again, Max to throw. Wide open, Van Dyke, and he like, banged out of bounds inside the five. McCain, at first to grab him, and then Hudson, who had him deep, came up to help out. And Nevada's only a yard short of the first down. Here's something where they can work something that's second and short. Maxwell, again, I think had Van Dyke as his intended receiver, but looked off the safety that time and then went to Van Dyke at the last second. There you see him double teaming, getting him out of bounds. Van Dyke came in with 94 catches. If he gets six today, he holds the all-time record. We'll talk more about that. Second down, here comes Galloway. Oscar will nose it uh, very close to the first down. So Nevada should have a first and goal. Getting back to that, uh, Howard Twilley holds the all-time record with 99 catches. If Maxwell, who came in the ball game with 94 today, gets six, he will set the national receiving record. Howard Twilley out of uh, Tulsa yep. back uh, almost 30 years ago. I think it was 1964 that he set that record. So that's a record that has stood for a long time. I was asking uh, Bill Daniel on radio if he knew who the guy who threw the ball to him was. First down, Wolfpack. They go with their wing tee. Galloway and Miner in the backfield. On the wing right side is Van Dyke. Galloway powers his way very close to the goal line. He didn't make it. See, Oscar, the one thing he's lacking this year is that outside speed. Had he gone to the corner, had the speed to get there, it was an easy six. He had to try to cut back and muscle his way in, and, and he stopped. Oscar had a good game last week against UNLV, did not start the game. Dennis and Dawson started the game, but Oscar Galloway came in in a backup role and did pretty good in the second half. He, he looked pretty good on this play. They faked the handoff up the middle to Miner and then went to the right side to Galloway. Again, Wagoner, the free safety, playing almost at the line of scrimmage, makes the stop. Second and goal from the one. Miner, he is in, and we have a one-point ball game. Kenny Miner with his seventh touchdown this year, and the teams have matched one another. The Wolfpack going 80 yards for the score. A lot of people talked about a track beat, and so far we've seen a lot of offense here in the first half. And there's just no way to stop that. If you, if you block it right, Kenny Miner has enough hole to get in, and he looks a little hobbled as he comes off the field, Dan. Yeah, we will have Paul Stewart on the sideline give us an update. Paul will check. Miner wants to play as long as he possibly can, obviously. Damon Shea, who's made 45 of 47 extra points, puts this one up in good, making 46 of 48. We have a tie ball game with seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll return to Logan, Utah. Stay with us. We have a lot more coming your way. It's the most advanced 4x4 sport utility ever built. The new 1996 Jeep Grand Cherokee in stock now at Reno Jeep Eagle. With new interiors and standard features like dual front airbags, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, premium eight-speaker sound system, and available 5.2-liter V8. And check this special introductory lease that has just been announced. Test drive the new 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee now in stock at Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on mill. Yes, you will. Using up all your luck looking for parking? Come to the Nugget. We've got 1,252 free spaces in our cool and covered garage. Well, you get a good look once again at Romney Stadium, and I stand corrected. During the timeout, we checked it. It is not the national record of Howie, Howard Twilley. It's the Big West Conference record. Thompson from Long Beach State has 99 catches, and that's the record that Van Dyke is going after. But the Twilley record is still within his grasp. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Damon Shea again getting ready. Abu Wilson along with Craig Miller are the deep men.
Shea with an end over end kick that should be returned this time by Miller from the 11. And he will get to the 25 yard line. On this date in Wolfpack history, November 4th, 1978, Tim Malloy returned a punt 70 yards for a touchdown to help Nevada beat Hayward State 21 to nothing. That was the third of four shutouts in an 11-0 season for Nevada. A year they went on to play the playoffs, a game that was televised right here on our network, ABC. Jim Simpson was at Mackey Stadium to do it. They played the University of Massachusetts. At their 26-yard line, Wilson. Nice play that time. Wilson looking to go inside after the block. And Mike Crawford would not be blocked out of the way. Crawford did a super job, and so did number 30, Deshaun Miles. You'll see these guys coming up on the right side of your screen. Deshaun Miles turns the play inside so that Crawford can make the play. And Crawford will not miss a tackle once he, once he has a guy in his sights like that. So give Wilson a yard, second and nine. Abu again coming in, leading ball carrier in the conference with 1,089 yards starting today's ball game. Mullins to throw, underneath to Wilson. Wilson will get to the 32. He'll be short of the first down. Again, it is Crawford with the stop. Wilson is their second leading receiver, only behind Kevin Alexander. He makes a lot of catches out of the backfield. Abu Wilson does everything, returning punts, kicks, and making receptions out of the backfield, and they really like what this kid does after he makes the catch as he works his way along the linebackers before Deshaun Miles, the leading tackler on the Wolfpack, makes the tackle. Yeah, it was Miles, and I saw Crawford come over, but Miles, the guy who had him by the shoulder pad. Mullins, again going for Alexander. They had Miles underneath, and Guider was right on his back. Pretty good coverage on the guy who has the touchdown pass this afternoon. Great coverage, and Utah State is forced to punt on their second possession this afternoon. They're only clicking on 32% of their third down conversions. They, uh, college football teams like to get that up around 50%, so John L. Smith, the head coach, not happy about that. With Juan Gibbons not here, as we'll get a look at the punt, is Demond Wilkins in single safety. From his 24, Wilkins looked like he was really tiptoeing to the sideline and met head on by Ty Gordon, one of the backup uh, cornerbacks. So Wilkins will get about a six or seven yard return. Our, our score is tied at seven. We're in Logan, Utah. The Wolfpack will have the ball when we return. left with is this silly video and 13 blenders sure you could do the old return the gifts and get cash back routine but that wouldn't get you that much needed set of wheels solution your gmc truck dealer because right now we're offering 300 dollars cash back on selected gmc sonomas kind of makes you weak in the knees doesn't it see your sierra nevada gmc truck dealer today if your windows are aluminum framed, consider upgrading to the new vinyl technology offered by Custom Glass. It's an easy, affordable way to eliminate cold air drafts, reduce interior dust, keep noise pollution out, and save. And Colby & Colby wood windows and doors add style and value to any home. Or bring the outdoors in with a natural wood sunroom by Westview. Call Custom Glass at 329-4265 for a free at-home estimate. Trust the original Custom Glass of Reno. Well, we're back with the former quarterback and the current quarterback. Mike Maxwell getting instructions from head coach Chris Zoll. Trots back into the huddle. They have a lot of them down there with Jeff Tisdale, the assistant head coach, and, and Chris Alt and Mike Maxwell. So when you have one quarterback talking to another, they speak the same language, and I think it really helps. There's Chris Smeelan. He was a coach. You might remember in the old days for the University of Nevada. Came in. He coached with John Pettis. There is John L. Smith, their head man. And he coached at the University of Nevada and was fired by Chris Alt some 15 years ago. The pack at their 30-yard line. Maxwell and Van Dyke hook up once again. McCain with a good hit. Was the ball loose or not? Rockwood coming over to try to help out his receiver. He gets pushed out of the way. They say the ball was down at the 36. It'll be second and four for the Wolfpack as they start going after it down there. Mark L. McCain came up and really hit Van Dyke. It'll be Nevada's football. 
This is just a quick hitter, and it's very difficult for defenses to stop this. Wolfpack will just kill you all day on the underneath stuff like this, and then they'll turn on the Jets and throw over the top. It looked, it looked like he was down, didn't it? Well, the ball looked like it was loose, but it was still in his chest or stomach area and hadn't rolled loose yet. That's why the official, I think, had a hard time seeing. So he said the ball was down by contact of the surface. That'll move it to the 36-yard line. It'll be second and four. Utah State defense jumping around at the snap of the ball. Miner comes left. The flag is down. Short game for Ken Miner. And the flag came down generally in the area of offensive holding, but we'll have to wait. Well, Rockwood doesn't look real happy. It is. It's holding against Nevada, so they'll push it back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The way Rockwood is gesturing at the sideline, you get from our camera up top, it looks like he may be the offending party. We're tied at seven. We're still in the first quarter with 5.20 to go. And although the score is tied, I think Nevada, especially their coaches, have to be pleased with how the tempo of this game is going. Utah State did score on the one long play, but so far the Nevada defense has shown that they can stop Utah State. They stopped them on their second drive, and they were, they were uh, close to stopping them on the first drive. It hadn't been for that one big play. The offense, meanwhile, seems like they're clicking fairly well against the league's top defense, Utah State. Nevada will go with their quad receivers, two to the right and two to the left for the first time. Maxwell's got Cornell West wide open on a turn, and he'll get close to the first down. He needed to get to the 40, but lost his balance, and his knee goes down at the 39. If Corn keeps his feet here, he works against the true freshman Craig Miller, number 20. If Cornell could keep his feet here, he may go for a touchdown because Miller fell down there. Miller, number 20, is one of the guys that Wolfpack wanted to work against. New in the lineup, Terrence Gaines was injured and probably out for the season. So Miller, who's played a little bit, is forced into the starting duty. And just a freshman, they want to work on him if they can. Flags everywhere on the quick snap and the quick count as Hadwick comes out with a ball. I don't know if there's anybody better in the league at that than Mike Maxwell with a hard count. A lot of teams see that on film. It is offsides against Utah State. A lot of teams see that on film, and disciplined teams won't jump offsides on that. But Mike Maxwell sure does that a lot. It seems to work a lot. Yeah, he and Hadwick, uh, last week Steve Hill worked the entire game. They didn't have that, that fluidity that the Hadwick and uh, Maxwell have accumulated over this year. but. When the Hedwick sees somebody jump offside, Max is ready, the ball goes. See the game the other night on Thursday night when the, the center snapped the ball and the uh, quarterback was back in the shotgun? Right. Virginia had to hustle to recover. Tiki Barber. Good play fake. Maxwell going deep for McHenry, but McHenry held up by Hudson, and then a flag goes down. Let's see which way it'll be called. They may call the push off that time on Hudson. It looked like he might have pushed him out. Now watch Ben Croslin playing tackle this game instead of end because of all the injuries to their defensive linemen. And he gets right in the face of Maxwell and hits him hard. Maxwell overthrew this pass, but right before we got to that shot right there, Hudson pushed off a little bit on McHenry. Well, they'll pull the flag up. They say the ball was uncatchable. So the flag will not be enforced. You, I, you aptly pointed out that Croslin, number five, he, 95 was stunning. He was at uh, the right side, came in, so he'd come over the middle, hoping that one of the guards had pulled out to try to block somebody. He got very close, as you said, to getting Mike Maxwell. A lot of injuries on this defensive line. Matt Hawk and Chad Lyman, a couple of starters, are out, and that's really going to hurt the Aggies today. Maxwell on a second and 10. Going deep for Wilkins, overthrows him. DeMond well covered by Coleman. You know, I was talking to Chris Alt this week about the, the secondary for Utah State, and he said, they've got some athletes back there. He said, you remember Louisiana Tech in the, the last game we did? They had some good cover people. He said, the Aggies also have some good cover people, and they're showing it this afternoon. A guy we haven't talked about yet, we talked about him a, a little bit early on in the game uh, when we showed the starting lineup, but we haven't talked about during game action, is Spencer Wagoner, number nine. He was an athlete of the week, Big West athlete of of the week on defense earlier this season. He had 16 tackles against Utah last week. He is a big time athlete with two interceptions. Pull back with a third down again, third and 10. 
Maxwell on a curl's got Cornell West open, and David Gill gets back. West goes down to the service, but Gill will get credit for the tackle. And West worked it in front of the true freshman, Craig Miller, number 20. You talked about the Wolfpack wanting to work on that side, but Miller's a good one. The thing is, he doesn't have any experience being just a freshman. Maxwell back to pass and had Cornell in his sights the whole time. That was Wagner coming on the blitz, and uh, Miller just gave him too big of a cushion. But Miller's a good one. He was recruited by UCLA out of high school, and it, the kid can play. He just needs to get a little experience back there. Reminds me of a lot of Mike Guider in terms of the experience factor. So the third down conversion for the pack gets him a first down at the Aggie 41. Miner looks inside, reverses direction, and a nice cut to try to get outside. A straight arm on Hudson. Hudson's helmet comes off, but he hangs on long enough to make the stop. Hudson did a nice job of hanging on after the straight arm. Ken Miner found nothing around the left side, and it just broke it around the right. Got some daylight, and if he could get by Hudson, he would have got the first down. But the, the play is designed to go to the left. Watch helmet, the, the uh, Hudson hat come off. This is at the end of the play when Hudson gets a straight arm, but does a good job of just hanging on, and then shoves him out of bounds, and Ken Miner did. He shoved his hat right off. Usually, to get some leverage, you have to have a, a hand in the face mess. There's Hudson readjusting his hat. Miner got two. It is second and eight. Maxwell in the play fake, rolls left and throws again to West, who makes it just off the surface at the 34-yard line. West went out in that pattern, sat in the flat, and just camped there. He was open for a good three seconds. Craig Miller, the defensive back on that side, gave him a huge cushion. Didn't get near him even after he saw that, that Maxwell was going to throw to him. He was going to throw his direction, and it wasn't until Maxwell actually let the ball fly that Miller came in to make the tackle. This time, the Wolfpack faced with a third and three. Last time, it was third and ten. Another jump on the defense. That's Croslin, who came across. The flags fly, and the second time this afternoon, Padwick and Maxwell have combined for five yards by way of penalty. And they'll take that every time. And that's a design play. They try to do that. He goes with a hard count, and if they don't jump offsides, there's the offside call by the head referee. But if they don't come offsides, then they just go back into the regular count and run the play that they have called. Maxwell completing 67% of his passes. That's right on his season average. He's completed 8 of 12, Dana, for 76 yards. It's getting ugly down in Florida. Florida taking on Northern Illinois from the Big West. 37 to 6 in the second quarter. Danny Werfel not even playing in that game. Yeah, he didn't start. The number two guy got the start. Wolfpack gets the first down by way of penalty. Quickly to Van Dyke on the right side. Alex will have enough for another first down. Nice block by Cornell West, and he gets a high five from Mike Rockwood. Rockwood, the big tackle, seven-footer, knows what a good block is, and he appreciates what Cornell West did to spring him. Let's see if we can see the block by number one, Cornell West, after Van Dyke catches the ball. There's Cornell West right there on the left side of your screen, and he lets Van Dyke get around the end and across the first down marker for another first down. At the Aggie 18-yard line, the game tied at seven. Pack looking for their second score. Miner, not much running room that time. On the spin move at contact, he got about a yard more. Nevada having a little bit of trouble moving the ball on the ground, but they seem to have little trouble moving it through the air. Spencer Wagner, the free safety, makes the stop. For the pack, it brings up a second and eight. Time winding down under two minutes remaining in the first quarter. We'll, we're still tied in this one, seven to seven. Once again, the pack goes with their four wide receivers. Van Dyke and McHenry are to the top of your screen. You see McHenry, Van Dyke is in shadow to the right. The catch made by Van Dyke will be at about the 12-yard line. That is his fifth reception. So now he has tied the conference record with 99. Utah State, there you see the We think that's a big West record. Not yeah, it is, it is a big West record. Thompson from Long Beach State holds that record. They're tied. The next one by Van Dyke breaks it. The Howard Twilley record I talked about is a little bit different. We'll get to that when we can. Less than a minute to go on a third down. There's Van Dyke with his sixth catch, his record-breaking catch, and he'll be chased out of bounds at the five. And it boggles the mind to think that this kid 
breaks a record in his ninth game, in the first quarter of his ninth game, and he still has two more to go. Yes. That just tells you what kind of numbers Maxwell and Van Dyke are putting up this season. They're mind-boggling. People got used to a little bit in Reno, I think, because of what Chris Vargas and Brian Reeves did. But these guys are surpassing even those marks. With that catch in the first down, the Pack has a first and goal at the Aggie five-yard line. Again, we, they go with their wing tee. Here comes Galloway. Well, they faked the Galloway. Good fake by Maxwell. He's got Van Dyke. Touchdown. Van Dyke reaching up and with those soft gloves, pulls it in. I saw Tony Merrick working on Van Dyke's back earlier this morning. And that is uh, Van Dyke's 12th touchdown reception this year. Ties in with Steve McHenry on the team for the scoring lead. And these guys are on a tear. 12 touchdowns in nine games. Get a good look at Alex, and I asked Tony Merrick about the, the treatment he was giving Van Dyke, and he said, oh, just kind of a muscle spasm. He said, hurt a little bit, but nothing severe. And there's a penalty on the play. It looks like they're going to call it back. You get a look at Chris Alt and the official talking about what was going on. Van Dyke, of course, he doesn't want the touchdown wiped out. Ineligible receiver downfield. Oh. Loss of down, second down, and goal now from the 10. That'll just give Max a little more end zone to work with. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, that could be a big call early on in this game. 43 seconds remaining first quarter. Still sevens on the board for each team. Back wants the ball at the left hash. They like to run right on that wing tee. I would be surprised if they go to that, though, here, second and 10, needing 10 yards for the touchdown. They may spread it and go with their four wide receiver. And they do. Here comes Cornell West and Devon Wilkins into the lineup. They bring out a tight end and Oscar Galloway, so they are going to go to the four wide receiver set and the single setback. Second and goal to go at the 10 yard line. Max got four seconds to get this one off. They do with a second flag goes down. Oh, I guess they didn't get it off. I thought they had a second to go to get it off, but they did not. So that'll cost them five more. So now it's first and goal for the 15, and they're going the wrong way. You see the delay of game call. Something that the head man doesn't like a lot. He and uh, Jeff Tisdall, his assistant head coach. Four wide receivers stay in. McHenry, this time, not as widely spread. He's on the left side, tight end. See if anybody covers him. The way they're playing right now, well, they do drop off. Big rush by Crossland will drop Maxwell, his first sack of the afternoon. Ben Crossland with six tackles for losses. And he has five and a half sacks, third on the Utah State team. Utah State is... Uh, very proficient in sacking the quarterback. That's their 27th team sack this year. So you know why they're number one in the, in the conference on defense. That's a good reason right there. We have seen Mike Maxwell do it so many times. You may be right. That loss it down on that illegal receiver downfield may be a very big play in this first half of football. Third down. It's still goal to go. That one's intercepted the goal line. Wagoner with his second pick this year, and he'll bring it all the way out to the 35. What a defensive stand for the Aggies. Their fans are elated. Wagoner with his third pick on the season, and what a key call against the Wolfpack down after they scored the touchdown. They uh, disallowed the touchdown because uh, they had an illegal receiver downfield. Maxwell looked to the right, came back to the left, and Wagner just stepped in front. We'll be right back after this. Hi, friends. Don't believe those other guys. No one sells used cars or trucks for less than Jones West Ford. We sell hundreds by selling them for less. Take a look at these examples. This is a 1992 Ford Force Wagon, only 89.83. 92 Suzuki Samurai four-wheel drive, only 79.83. 92 Ford Force Sedan, only 79.83. Save hundreds of dollars at Jones West Ford, where we've got the selection. We'll see you here. 
On the next home improvement, while Tim's putting up a new dish, is someone picking up his main dish? I've seen a guy in my house hitting on my wife. Don't you trust me? Is it jealousy? What is the matter with you? Or just bad reception? Why don't you and I have lunch together? Home improvement. Coming up tonight at 7, right here on News Channel 8. Yes! Hayden's got a secret. You told her, didn't you? She's my wife. Well, what am I? <laughs> Coach. Tonight at 7.30, right here on News Channel 8. We're in Logan, Utah, and probably the biggest play, the second biggest play, I would say, of this year, the biggest one, the one down in Louisiana on the touchdown in the final seconds, but look at this, Maxwell picked off. He needed 23 yards for the touchdown and tried to force it into double coverage in there. And Wagner, who's a great cover guy, did a great job of, of uh, checking out Maxwell's eyes on that play. Aggies first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Mullins to Wilson, and he will get a very tough yard. Nevada's defense has done a great job against the run in this game. So far, so good on the defensive side. They let up that one big 48-yard touchdown reception by Kevin Alexander, but other than that, the defense has played well today. That they have, they're primarily looking at the run. And Wilson's the guy you want to stop, and they have done an adequate job. Again, the quad receivers, and Alexander will be picked up by a linebacker. He's on the right side. They send him deep, and that's where they're going. Alexander comes back, and did he get it or not? He was out of bounds. Had a foot out, but Dana, you could see on the quad set all the way, they had Kevin Alexander lined up against a linebacker. Good call on that one, Dan. They did. Sean Miles trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Kevin Alexander. And the last time he goes one-on-one -on -one against Deshaun Miles, touchdown, 48 yards. As soon as Mullen saw that Deshaun Miles was hooked up with Alexander, he was going his way the entire time. He didn't care. He knows that Alexander can beat Miles. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, all the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano on the Maury Distributing Halftime Report. He'll have an interview with Ken Miner. Third and nine. Again out of the shotgun. Mullins the lone back. And a whistle before the snap. So the Aggies take longer, longer than the 25 seconds allotted. Abu Wilson, five carries for just 16 yards. Well below his average. He's averaging only three yards a carry today, but on the season, it's up around five. Yeah, 5.3, and Dana, he's been collecting yards at 136 per ball game. So you can see he can get loose at any time, but right now he's in check. Now it'll be third and 14 for the Aggies. Mullins, not a good scrambler, comes out to his left. He's across the line of scrimmage. He'll have to run for the out of bounds, and Crawford makes sure he gets there. And that's the best thing that happened to the Wolfpack defense, Dana, is get Mullins scrambling because he's not a big runner. The defensive line did a super job that time, and that's what they haven't been doing the last four games. They haven't been putting any pressure on the quarterback. That time they looped. Yearwood came around the tackle, came in, and forced Mullins out of the pocket. By the time he was out of the pocket, he had no chance to get 14 yards for the first down. Murray Alley, who had a 43-yard punt last time, will do it again. He's been averaging 40 yards a kick. Wilkins back alone. Well, there's a tough one to handle. It comes down short and will be down at the 35-yard line by Hudson. Morreale really missed that one because he had a tail dragger, the bottom of the ball coming down. You don't get any distance when that happens. The game is tied at 7. We're in the second quarter. We'll return to Logan in just a minute. Concrete and paint. Concrete and paint. That was my world. I learned when to hold back, when to let go, when to act when to be still. It's where I drew my hardest, purest breath. Wolfpack basketball. Find your zone. Concrete and paint. For a few hours, that's what the world was made of. Call 348-PACK for season tickets. True 16-inch aluminum wheels, specially designed tires, and a precision-tuned suspension might seem a bit sporty for a caravan. But when you think about it, it makes sense. Considering all the racing around you do. The new Dodge Caravan Sport. 
See your local Dodge dealer. My husband and I have been coming to Jones West Ford for over 10 years now, and I'm a realtor with Thomas Clark Real Estate, so I need a very dependable car. We've come back uh, and bought a Ford Contour, and we're very happy with the, the excellent service that Jones West Ford gives us. Jones West Ford, one satisfied customer after another. You should go to Jones West Ford because they give excellent service, they have a wonderful product, and, and we left feeling very happy with Jones West Ford. Well, there you see the situation. Uh, just started the second quarter, and the game is tied at seven. After that punt by Morreale, uh, the pack will take over first and ten. They've added their own 35-yard line. Maxwell came up uh, from center, checking off. He's got McHenry open, and McHenry goes down at the 40-yard line after the catch. And most of the time when Mike Maxwell audibles into a call, he makes the right decision. He is probably the smartest quarterback to ever come through Nevada. And when I say smart, I'm talking about football smart. He really knows what defenses are trying to do to stop the Wolfpack, and he calls out of a play and into another one, and that one works for about four. Talking about football, you are right. He's a smart quarterback. You get a shot briefly at the back of McHenry, but... Academically, he's also a three-point plus student. Again to throw. Van Dyke on the turn, has the catch immediately, and then out of bounds. And you can just see Van Dyke looking down, said, oh, the foot's out of bounds, otherwise I can take off. <laughs> Maxwell threw that ball before Van Dyke ever made his break. These guys really have their timing down over the last two seasons. Maxwell goes back to pass and sees that Van Dyke's getting a huge cushion back there and throws the ball before Van Dyke ever breaks. As soon as he turns, the ball's right there. But he's a good enough to receiver to where he can make the catch, even though the ball's right on top of him. Back at the Aggie 48-yard line. Again, another first down. Minor. Dragged down from behind, uh, Robinson, Danilo Robinson got across the line of scrimmage. That's where he is quick. We talked about that a little bit when introducing the starting lineups, but he caught Miner from the side from behind before Kenny could really get a field. Miner eight carries for 47 yards right now and one touchdown. So he's having a pretty good afternoon so far through a quarter and two minutes of football. He gave us the numbers earlier, a better, uh, better afternoon than his counterpart, Wilson, who had 16 or 17 yards and five carries. Maxwell with protection from Miner that time. Oh, they're holding on to oh McHenry. That is Wagner was checking the label on his shirt. He had his hand inside his shirt, just holding on. McHenry trying to get downfield. I wonder if we have a good shot of that or not, but I'm I'm laughing because it was so oh. blatant. It was so blatant. He Wagner. looked like he looked like a little kid trying to get away from his mother. You know how they hold him in his shirt? And his legs are going 100 miles an hour, but he isn't going anywhere. Wagner didn't care. He just did not want to no. get burned for a touchdown. I mean, he, he said, I, I'm going to get called for the penalty here. I don't care. I just do not want him to go over the top of me on this one. And he grabs that Dyke's jersey and just holds on to him for dear life. He was, I mentioned earlier they were blitzing up the middle. It was Kenny Miner who stepped in front of the blitzing player. And I'm not sure if it was Gill or not that gave Maxwell the time to throw it. Maxwell, 13 of 18 for 114 yards and one pick. Don't forget the Philadelphia Eagles battle the Dallas Cowboys this week on Monday Night Football, and I'll bring you a behind-the-scenes look at Monday Night Football coming up on News Channel 8 at 5 o'clock on Monday. Don't miss that. It's a very interesting look behind the scenes. With the first down, Nevada now at uh, Utah State's 31 on a draw. Miner, boy, he searches out and searches out for a hole, finds a little seam. The thing about the Aggies, they're so quick reacting. Miner normally, when he makes that cut with that misdirection, can go outside and get to the corner. That time, the Aggies re resp responded very well. Utah State is doing a super job of filling the gaps, but Kenny Miner just picks his way along the line until he finds any seam at all. I mean, he, he's lucky to get three yards off that play. That was all Ken Miner. Brings a second and seven. Again, Miner behind the Union looking for a seam will get very short yardage. Made by Mike Hudson. 
the offensive line, nicknamed the Union, because they stick together, play together, do everything together. That time Miner figuring if I can follow these guys, I can get some yardage. Nothing opened up for him. What a super group up front. Bob Cooper, the right guard, a guy who played tackle last season, got the big blocker award last week. And you see Brandon Graft, number 74, doing his job inside. And Ken Miner just tries to find an, an opening up front and does it. Gain of a yard by Miner, third and six. Maxwell with great time, waits for somebody to open up, and that is McHenry again. He'll have the first down at the 12 or 13 yard line. You have to be so impressed with Steve McHenry. 6'3", 205 pounds, and he continues to make the big catch over the middle. They asked him at the Wolfpack Quarterback Club luncheon on Monday, do you like catching the ball over the middle? And he says, no, I don't like to, I just have to. And he knows I'm gonna get popped when I go over the middle, but he does his job. He knows that's his job and he does it. With the big numbers last week of uh, Mike Maxwell and Alex Van Dyke, the coaches in the locker room after the game were heaping praise on Steve McHenry because he made the sure fingertip catches when they needed them. Now the pack goes with the two tight ends. Matt Kelly is in. Max rolling right. Throws a helicopter, and boy, he's on his helmet as he had heavy pressure from Davis and Crossland. He just got rid of it that time. A nice play by Mike Maxwell. No one was open, and he had heavy pressure. In fact, he's been under heavy pressure a number of times in a number of throws today. He, he can get a, a shot at the ball. Watch the ball. It just wobbles. Yeah, he's just getting rid of it. He tried to throw that one into the fourth row. Kelly comes out, and let's see if Nevada goes with their quads or four wide receivers. Demond Wilkins comes back in the lineup. Tight end McHenry will be on the right side. They'll try to sneak him in some, into that secondary with no coverage. They're picking him up. That's where he's looking. They go to McHenry, picked off by Wagoner again. Wagoner with the great eyes, reading Maxwell. Maxwell was honed in on McHenry all the way. McHenry got to the goal line, and Wagner just cheated, got there, picked it off for the second time. The only one that can kill Nevada drives, it appears today, is the Wolfpack themselves. Mike Maxwell with his second interception. He has 17 for the season. And he just tried to, he didn't even see Wagner, obviously, because he threw a right to him. Wagner plays center field so well, he's not afraid to come in and make the hit. He did not play against the Wolfpack last year in Reno. On the ground, Wilson. Boy, he's caught behind the line of scrimmage, and Danny, you're right. That defense is really keying on uh, Abu Wilson, not giving him anything at all on the blitz. Crawford, the first to get to him. The Wolfpack defense looking super against the rush, and they have been all season. They've been very solid against the run. They've been a little soft against the pass, but Utah State is not a great passing team. They give Wilson a minus yard. So it'll bring up a second and 11. It looked like he had gotten stunned for two or three yards, but they gave him forward progress. Play fake. Alexander. And Hassan lets him get away. Alexander gets a few more yards, but he's short of the first down. Billy Daniel and I were talking, Dana, about the tackling of the Wolfpack. I think that's what gets them in problems defensively. They don't, they don't make the first sure tackle. Right, they haven't been a sure tackling team at all this season. They talk about being in position to make plays. Now they just have to make the plays. And Hassan was in position to make that play, but didn't make the play. A gain of nine, that'll bring up a third and two. Wilson, he did not get to the first down stick. No, he did not. He is short by about a half a yard. And let's see what kind of guts John L. Smith has here. No, he sends on the punting team. They'll punt it away, fourth and a half a yard. It's Mike Crawford right in the middle of your screen, number 46. The play goes right in his gap, and it's gap defense. He fills the gap, and they stuff him. Yeah, David Miller would not give ground in the middle, so they couldn't get a hole. Then the linebackers came quickly, Miles and Crawford. Abu Wilson, seven carries, 15 yards. Yeah, those are the kind of numbers the defense is going to be very proud of. But right now, the numbers that are most important are the sevens that are on the board, and there's seven on each side. Morreale will punt for the third time. Morreale was a kicker his freshman year. He was the place kicker, and the place kicker right now was Mike Knorr. He was the punter his freshman year. They flip-flopped last year, and Morreale again is the punter this season. Both of them could do both jobs. 
not many teams have that kind of depth. And you, you may have somebody who can do both jobs, but the thing is they have quality guys who can do both jobs. So even though they have switched, I think the Aggies are very happy with the way it's come out. Morielli was fourth in the country his freshman year in field goals per game. So this kid can kick a field goal if they need him to, but Mike and has done the job. And Morielli had that 43 yard of the first time. Last kick was not nearly up to that. As the pack will send 10. He has time to get it off, and this one he gets his foot into. Wilkins calls a fair catch and will take it at the 30 yard line. We are in the second quarter. We have nine minutes and two seconds still to play in the quarter. The game is tied at seven. We'll return to Logan, Utah and Romney Stadium right after this timeout. Doing what you like can be a lot more fun. When you do it in a 1996 GMC Jimmy. The new 96 Jimmies are here and are priced thousands less than the competition. Hurry into your Sierra Nevada GMC truck dealer today. Ever since John Nesquaga upgraded his casino, visitors to the Nugget aren't so quick to eat and run. They're staying with the 1,500 generous slots, 6-9 video poker, single deck 21, and Reno's best race and sports book. Yep, folks are finding it hard to leave. Of course, others are finding it hard to stay awake. But John will fix that. Okay, who wants coffee? Play at the Nugget and leave nothing to chance. On the next live, one of Hollywood's most glamorous actresses, Academy Award winner Faye Dunaway. Plus, magical musical memories with Paul Anka. Later in the week, Lonnie Anderson and Dylan McDermott on live. Monday morning at 9. We're in Beverly Hills. I have to ask you something about your love life. Why do you think the marriage failed? Oprah! Oprah! No, I came for the dance lesson. Sly, Cindy, Ellen, Luke, Jean-Claude, next Oprah. Monday afternoon at 4, right here on News Channel 8. And there's a great look. That's how beautiful it is. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperature in the low 40s, but just as beautiful as you can believe here in Logan, Utah. Monday night, I'll bring you a behind-the-scenes look at Monday Night Football. See what it's like to produce... ABC's hottest sports show, Monday at 5, only on News Channel 8. Pack with a first and 10. Kenny Miner with a convoy trying to go left. And will be brought down after a short gain. I thought maybe if Miner stretched that a little more, he had room to the outside. Miner 11 carries, 54 yards, right on his 5-yard carry average. And he does a nice job of just picking his way along the line. There's not a lot of room up front, but enough to get a couple out of it. Yeah, Danilo Robinson, Danilo Robinson, again, going along the line of scrimmage, finally made the stop after the gain of two. Give him a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Again, do we have another offside? Yes, we do. That's the third one. Maxwell, 14 of 21 on the afternoon, so he's hitting on 67% of his passes for 128 yards, and he's got two interceptions. Problem may be that Utah State wears those navy blue uniforms, and, you know, he's used to throwing to navy blue in home games. Maybe he's getting colorblind out there with those two picks. Remember what Jim Hess said in our opening game of the season? He said they wanted to wear their uniforms, their, their white uniforms, because Cody led better, threw better to the guys in white shirts. And that he wanted his excuse. Anyway. Right, he wanted his guy throw into the same color jersey all the time. It is an offside penalty, five yards. Nevada now will have a second and two. Miner leaping over the pile. Uh, David Miner Gill is there to David stop him, Gill. but he should have enough for the first down as he crosses the 40. He's got the first down. It'll be first to 10 for the Wolfpack as they move the chains. And so far, they've moved the chains a lot this afternoon. The only thing that stopped Wolfpack drives has been two interceptions by Mike Maxwell. They scored a touchdown on their, th their third possession. Danny, you might recall, when we were down in Louisiana, we were talking about the efficiency inside the 20-yard line of the pack. Today, it's been just the opposite here in the first half. Maxwell on first down. Boy, that time, Van Dyke juggles it, and then Miller comes up and makes sure he doesn't hang on on a second opportunity, but uh, you see Van Dyke in his disgust of not hanging on to that ball. Alex had a little trouble hanging on to the ball early in the season. He dropped three in the season opener, but since then, he's really cured that problem until this play. 
That was right there. Yep, looked like he was going to make another one of those breaks to the inside, and the ball came out just before he secured it. Second and ten. The linebackers blitz. Van Dyke on single coverage grabs this one for sure and rolled out of bounds by Miller. Another Nevada first down, and Craig Miller slipped on the play but got up just in time to make the catch against Van Dyke. Miller, number 20, the true freshman, backpedals, slips on the soft turf, but got up. And thank goodness for the Aggies because if he doesn't, Van Dyke's gone. Yeah, that, Miller's been having some problems out there because remember earlier against West, he slipped and went down. They were having Hudson cross the field and go with Van Dyke. They're not doing that. Well, now they go back to it. Hudson will pick up Van Dyke at the bottom of your screen. Again, Miner. Boy, nice charge that time. I think it was Robinson. Yes, it was. Danilo Robinson who made that good, quick inside move and got Miner to line a scrimmage. Let's hope he get a shot from the left. Robinson, number 97. Gets him right around the good ankle, his left ankle. He is a fourth in the, on the team in tackles is Robinson. 66 coming into the game. Two for a loss. Make it three now because that was a one-yard loss. Robinson, a very skilled defensive athlete. You know, in high school, he was the most valuable player on their basketball team, and he also won the triple jump. So you know he's got to have good athletic ability. Going deep, and the hold, look at the hold. Oh, boy, I don't know if we can see that on a replay if we get it, but Van Dyke had gone out and then going deep, and then Hudson just hooked him and held on. It's the same play that Spencer Wagner had earlier where they just grabbed Van Dyke by the jersey and hold on for dear life hoping that he doesn't break free and get the touchdown because if he does, he was by everybody. The reason they're holding on to the jersey is because they're juked on the play, and that time Hudson with the obvious pass interference penalty. That may be something that Utah State coaching staff taught their guys in practice this week. Because he has such great speed, give up the 15 yards, the automatic first down, but don't give up the touchdown. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good comment. It might well be because the yardage is a lot better than seven points. Van Dyke, eight catches for 67 yards so far in this ballgame. We still have five minutes left in the second quarter. And remember, they wiped out a touchdown catch, which was number nine. The pack moving again. First down at the Aggie 31. They've been in that area most of the first half. Miner, nice move to get away from Davis. Spins, broke another tackle. He's at the 25 before drop. So whatever was bothering Kenny Miner early with the ankle, he seems to have shaken that entirely. He did come up gingerly in the first quarter and was shaking his head, almost indicating that he didn't think he'd be able to go the rest of today. But so far, he looks great in the second quarter. He's juking guys and getting extra yards and breaking tackles and spinning away, and he's looking super right now. Well, Kenyatta Green was the guy, that, number 51, who rolled around and dropped him, and uh, Green is not a guy who lets loose very often. They try Miner again, got away from Wagner. The free safety up at the line of scrimmage, coming across the line of scrimmage. He was reading all the way, reading Kenny Miner, and Miner made a good, quick move to get out of his grasp, and now Miner will go to the sideline. We talked about how well he was doing. Maybe it's, let's hope it's just for a breather and not to check that ankle. And Oscar Galloway comes into the lineup, not Dennis and Dawson, who got the start last week, but Oscar Galloway, the guy who spelled Dawson. Miner limping a little bit, but uh, the look on Billy Campfield's face like it wasn't major concern. We will check that. I think they just want to give him a little bit of a rest. He's sitting on the bench over there, and the trainers aren't coming over. Tony Merrick is going to come over and check on him, but it looks like he's all right. Third and a yard. Galloway, the eye back. He will power left, and he easily gets it inside the 20. You bet. Minor 15 carries for 66 yards and a touchdown, so he's having an afternoon so far. There's Oscar Galloway. He is a load. So you give him a little crease, and he works his way through it. He is tough to stop. Well, the thing is, you saw Galloway from behind. Up, Thorpe, number 75, and number 63, Bob Cooper, had taken the defense, and they had just pushed him into the service, had buried him. Galloway stays in. Nevada with three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Here comes Oscar. That time, a shoestring tackle will bring him down. Again, Robinson starting to make his presence felt here in this second quarter. We're tied at seven. Robinson's fourth tackle for a loss this season. Oscar Galloway, 5'11", 225 pounds, has a low center of gravity. 
but Danilo Robinson does a super job of getting running backs around the ankle and tripping them up just enough to get them down onto the turf. And Kenny Miner is back in the lineup as Galloway goes to the sideline. Yeah, Robinson, a defensive end, but he's not real big, as we mentioned. 6'1", 233. Second and 11, again a draw, this time Miner. Good mover, go around the grass block, and Kenny Miner did most of that on his own. Coleman and Green bring him down, but he read Brandon the Graf's block, started out right, then cut left behind it. And that's what got him the extra yardage. And Markel McCain is down. Number three for the other side, Utah State, is down on his back at the 25-yard line. The draw play is just set up perfectly by the Nevada's uh, passing game. They're back on their heels, Utah State defense, and we will take a timeout. We have 4.19 to play in the second quarter. The game is tied at seven. We're coming back. Need a car loan? Need it fast? Then call 1-800-CAR-LOAN. Nobody, I mean nobody, makes getting a car loan faster or easier than calling 1-800-CAR-LOAN. If you've been turned down for credit before, why submit another application with just one phone call? One phone call. You could be approved in less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. Need a car loan? Need it fast. Make the call. 1-800-CAR-LOAN. Call now. Mitsubishi has agreed to offer special financing during Wild West moving sale. Truckloads of new Mitsubishi product are arriving at Wild West, but there's nowhere to put them. So prices are slashed on all Mitsubishi product. Buy Mitsubishi during Wild West moving sale and pay nothing down. Get free interest and no accrued interest. Plus, make no payments till January 97. Buy Mitsubishi with no money. Get the lowest price guaranteed. Plus, make no payments till January 97 at Wild West moving sale. Let's get another good look at that run by Kenny Miner and how well he reads his offensive line. And look at number 74, the junior college transfer, Brandon LeGraff, who makes a great block on Danilo Robinson, and Miner does a great job of reading it. Whichever side Robinson goes to, Miner goes around the other side. Once again, Nevada first and goal, this time from the nine. Galloway coming right. A couple blocks, and he just motors his way inside the five. Kenyatta Green, the first to get to him. He got some help from uh, from Cardi, John Dale McCarty, or not McCarty, Cardi. Nevada's offensive line doing a super job right now, and expect them to just try to shove this down the Aggies' throat right here. Second and goal from the four-yard line. Two tight ends. Kelly is in along with McHenry. Galloway got five of the nine they need. A play fake. Maxwell looking for somebody to open in the end zone. Throws for Kelly. Touchdown. His first of the season, second of his career. The sophomore from McQueen High School makes a big catch right there. And Nevada goes up now 13 to 7. That is a big catch for Matt. He's had a couple opportunities this year, but this one will build his confidence tremendously. He was wide open on the play and stuck his hand up. Maxwell was looking for someone to throw to. Matt Kelly is number 89 and he'll be on the left side of your screen. He is just so wide open. He didn't want to go to him first, but he was so open that he had to go to him. It wasn't a great throw by Maxwell, and again, throwing back into the traffic. Sometimes you ask for all kinds of problems, but Kelly making the catch going down to the surface. Shea's extra point attempt is good. He's made 47 of 49. Nevada is out on top, 14 to seven. We have 3.23 to play before halftime. We'll be back in Logan, Utah, and the Aggies will have the ball. It's the most advanced 4x4 sport utility ever built. The new 1996 Jeep Grand Cherokee in stock now at Reno Jeep Eagle. With new interiors and standard features like dual front airbags, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, premium eight-speaker sound system, and available 5.2-liter V8. And check this special introductory lease that has just been announced. Test drive the new 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee now in stock at Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on mill. Yes, you will. Mori Distributing of Reno brings you this Budweiser moment. The game is more than strength and speed. There's a certain beauty, like a ballet, every move violent and aggressive, yet poetic and sublime. When you take hold of the ball, it's more than inflated pigskin. You're touching the heart and soul of America. You smell the grass rip from the soil, feel the hot sweat streaming, the sound of the crowd blast with excitement, and you know that the game has begun. 
that's where they're sitting. They're not. Oh, we got another look at the touchdown throw by Mike Maxwell to Matt Kelly. Kelly saw a lot of time last year as a freshman at tight end and hasn't seen a lot this season, but he comes up with a big touchdown catch there. Maybe that'll boost his confidence. Get ready for powerful comedy as Tim Allen stars in Home Improvement weeknights at 7 o'clock right here on News Channel 8, except for Monday nights when we have the Monday night football game, of course. Back went 70 yards on that drive. Wilson and Miller again are the deep men. Shea with a short end over end kick. Be taken at the 31 yard line and about a three yard return is about all the Aggies will get. Ernesto Ramos was the return man. That is really short up their their kick coverage team. Last couple of years, they really had some major problems with it, but they really worked hard on it this season, and they change it up. They'll kick it long and left, kick it long and right, another time kick it high and short, and they've done a super job of kick coverage this season. The Aggies need to get some offense. Miller will go right away to his key receiver. That's Kevin Alexander. Guider had given some ground, but boy, he got some immediate help, and he comes up with a ball. Wolfpack with the ball, but I think it was down. The tackle and the whistles is blown. I don't know how Mike Guider got that ball. Utah State player down on the field here, too. Craig Miller, the defensive uh, back for Utah State, not the only one having trouble with this turf. Mike Guider slips on this play as he tried to cover him. He tried to come up and make the stop, and he slipped on the play early and got there late to the ball. Ball looked like it was loose, didn't it? Alexander wasn't down, and he was searching for the ball. That is a Troy Kima, the junior left guard. Looks like he has some sort of a knee injury, and he's going to have to be helped off the field. Number of injuries to this Utah State team, especially on the defensive side. Matt Hawk, Chad Lyman, both out along the defensive line. Terrence Gaines is a, a defensive back out with an ACL injury. Yeah, look at those injuries, and they're mostly all leg injuries, knees or uh, in that area, and you see Kima struggling to get to the sideline. Another backup guard, Darren Mitchell, had gallbladder surgery. So, I mean, they've been hit by a rash of injuries, and I think that's hurt the Aggies' chances for a successful season. Ken Watts is in to replace him. He'll be at left guard. Second and about a yard and a half. They get it in the air. Again, chasing off the back of Alexander goes down to make the grab. But Guider giving him plenty of room. And it, with the Nevada parlance, they call it a stop. Just go down and stop, and he got the defensive back retreating and then just waited for the pass. Guider backpedaling the whole time that time, giving him plenty of cushion along the right side. And maybe Utah State will try to work underneath against Guider now in a few plays. Mullen is six of nine now passing, hitting on 67% of his passes. Wolfpack shows blitz, they come after him. Mullins is flushed, but he throws, and the ball knocked away. We have a flag down at the line of scrimmage. But Overby, I thought he tried to go through the tight end Griswold, and I thought had he gone around Griswold, he had a better chance to pick it off. Flag is not on Overby. It's at the line of scrimmage, and it's holding against Utah State. Overby did a super job, almost made a pick right there. On the offense. We are at uh, Romney Stadium here in Logan. We have a technical problem. We, we do not have our picture right now, but you do have audio, so we will keep that going for you. 234 here to go in the second quarter, and the pack leading 14 to 7. Well, you're used to this. You yep. do radio every week. Exactly, with it without pictures. That's what we have out of the shotgun. Mullins, the quarterback, on a second and very, or first and very long. Throws complete. Ramos. Has it at the 40 and spun down at the 42-yard line. We'll try to get the picture restored to you as soon as possible, having a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we'll take you through the radio broadcast on television until we do get things fixed up here. The spot the ball at the 43-yard line. It'll be second down. Second and uh, about 15 now for the Aggies. Ramos in the backfield now instead of Wilson. Yeah, that's a big change. Two wide receivers right of the formation. Out of the shotgun, Ramos back to block for Mullins. 
as pressure comes from his left side. The throw, good defensive coverage, but they'll have holding on Hassan. Hassan was right there with Alexander at the Wolfpack 47-yard line, and I'm not sure which way the pass interference will go. Oh, I think they, I think we have a picture back now in Reno, thank goodness, but I think they're going to call that offensive pass interference. It should go that way because Hassan had perfect coverage on the play he had perfect position you can see it at the left side of your screen Hassan looks like the intended receiver he's the guy in front of Alexander Alexander came over the top of the play and they are going to call that offensive pass interference and that's loss of down yeah the crowd protesting but you're right it was Hassan who had a better chance to catch the ball Hassan until he was grabbed by Alexander offense, loss of 15 yards repeat second down so that'll cost another 15 yards Aggies have to go to the Wolfpack 42-yard line for a first down, and the line of scrimmage will be their own 28. So it's second and forever for them. And there's 150 remaining before halftime. Nevada would dearly love to get the football back in this situation with enough time to tack on another score before halftime. Ricky Brumfield is in. He is a wide receiver just out of the top of your picture over there with Alexander. This time the ball thrown left side. I might have been batted at the line of scrimmage because there was no receiver in the area at all. Or otherwise he misread Harrison because Harrison was on a stop and go and he was out of the area. And they love the incomplete pass on that play because it stops the clock and the clock is definitely a factor now. Pack hoping to get it back with 147 a play. This is the time you... you if it's not thrown deep, you bat it down and take the punt. Aggies go with three wide receivers. And Mullins calls a timeout, something he didn't like. So that'll be even better for the Wolfpack. As they can talk about the defense, set up what they want to do. So third and 32 for Utah State of their own 28. And 147 left. That should be plenty of time for the Wolfpack to try to tack on another score here before halftime. They've moved the ball well. Two touchdowns and two interceptions. The only thing that stopped the Wolfpack today are the turnovers. I would think Nevada would put pressure once again on Mullins. Don't go into that, uh, that three-man rush and drop eight because uh, if they find something, get a long, long play, a long pass for a first down, then uh, all this clock saving doesn't do any good. About 40 degrees out there, so the hats are definitely coming in handy. But it's very comfortable outside today. Very nice afternoon. Mullins, 7 of 11 passing for 96 yards, just about right on his average. He's averaging about uh, 200 uh, yards a game in passing. Get a look at the sideline in Utah State. Is they're a little, uh, it had been for their defense, they'd be down by a bundle. They trail only by seven right now. Don't forget the Moria Distributing Halftime Report coming up. All the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano. He'll also have an interview with Ken Miner talking about his career here at the University of Nevada. Is it? winds down now he only has uh, two and a half more games here unless they go of course to the bowl game and december 14th would be another john payo is in defensively for the pack yep. on the play fake mullins rolls right so he can see pass thrown downfield and a catch made well there's the matter giving up that big long play again man you thought they had everybody covered but mullins rolls away so he can see downfield he gets a good vision and throws the deep completion to Aaron Frazier. Mike Guider had perfect coverage, but for some reason he stopped on the play. He stopped and came back, but he was right on Frazier, step for step until the last second. Here you might be able to see, you can see Guider right there at the uh, beginning of that play, stutter step. He just stopped on the play for some unknown reason. Backs have got to realize that you can out throw them. There's Ramos running up the middle. He is in heavy traffic. He gets it to the 15 yard line. Clock continues to run, 132, and now it stops as they move the chain. As Chris Alt said all during the week and talked about the fact that the defense could play tough but not give up the big play, and the big play has just crippled them. Sure has. Big play and turnovers today. It's a 14-7 ball game, but it really shouldn't be that close. Mullins brings him to the line of scrimmage, a first and 10 at the pack 15-yard line. Looking right side on a stop. He catches made at the 8 and out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. So plenty of time right now for Utah State. Mike Guider, they're working on his side right now, and it's uh, not looking good for the Wolfpack right before halftime. 
the penalties and the problems that Utah State had, all they do is come up with a 52-yard completion to get themselves out of a hole. You just have to shake your head about the defense. Gar or, uh, Wilson, Abu Wilson has not been a, a factor in this ball game, but the passing has been. Second and two at the seven. To throw that bad throw incomplete. Intended for Frazier at the goal line, and he was there and open, but Mullins with a very poor throw. And that brings up third and two. Critical down for Utah State at this point. And you know, isn't that strange? You think that Abu Wilson, the number one back in the conference, eighth in the nation, you figure he's gonna be a huge presence in this game, and he's nothing. And the, and the passing game, which you don't expect to be anything, is that Mullins, nine of 14, 146 yards. He's looking like an all-star. Yeah, you wonder about Wilson. He came in catching 29 passes. Even though if he's not carrying the ball, he's certainly an eligible pass receiver. Ramos has stopped at the five-yard line. I think he had to get inside the five for the first down. He's going to be very close to the first down. They're going to have to measure this one, I believe. He just needed to, to nose the ball across the five, and they banged him down just about right on the strike. Like Miles got to him from the side and stopped his forward lean. And if he is short, that's going to bring up a big decision for John L. Smith. I think he's thinking probably he's going to be in a shootout today, and he probably needs the six points here. So I'd imagine he'd go for it if he is short. Let's check it out. Well, that far. The, yeah, the official has to get down. Look at it. He's on one knee to measure, and it is an eyelash. So fourth down and a deep breath for a first down. And they're going to go for it. Here comes Mullins back onto the field. They're going to go for it. They realize that they need to score points to win this football game because Nevada can score so many points themselves. That's Smitty in the white shirt, John L., as they call him now. They call him John L. because when he was at Idaho, they had three John Smiths on the, That's right. on the team. Nevada defense jumping around. They jump offside, and the tables are turned. The Wolfpack had done it three times to the Aggies. Now the Aggies turn the tables on the pack a little too anxious. David Miller jumping and going across in that neutral zone. Turn the tables is right. Nevada does that so successfully. Utah State does it here to get the first down with ever, without ever having to snap the football. 50 seconds remain in the second quarter. First and goal from the two and a half yard line. And the clock is running, 44 and counting. I'm not sure Mullins knows that. The offensive unit might not know that. They have plenty of time. On the ground, Ramos running right. He's going to be grabbed and dropped about the line of scrimmage. Ball's loose, but it was down after the tackle. Utah State retains possession. Timeout now called on the field. And let's see when Ramos loses the handle on this football as he takes it around the right side. Nevada's done a great job of stuffing the defense. Tawan Hall, Garnett Overby, and he just tries to stretch for that extra yard. And as he does that, of course, the ground cannot cause a fumble. So the correct call by the officials. Ken Wilson, the linebacker coach in the white sweatshirt there on the right side of your screen. Clayton Lopez on the left, graduate assistant. Here's John L. Smith. John L. fired about 15 years ago by Coach Alt. He was the defensive coordinator at the University of Nevada and caused a little bit of bad blood between the two. They've since, I think, mended fences. They have. They, they, they've become actually pretty good friends because there was some uh, some bad blood, as you say, between the two of them. But uh, now they respectively talk about respectively, respectively talk about one another. And John L. bounced around, worked for Washington State, worked for Wyoming, then got the head job at Idaho and came down here last season in the in the off season. Don't forget, uh, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll have the Maury Distributing Halftime Report, all the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano, plus that interview with Ken Miner coming up in just a few minutes here. Nevada defense was on the sideline talking things over. They want to make a goal line stand like they did down in San Diego earlier this year. This is critical right now in Utah State with just one timeout remaining. 21 seconds remaining before halftime. Second and a yard and a half to go. Aggies give to Ramos. He didn't get there. Nope. Crawford was in the backfield to meet him head on, and the Aggies have to take their final timeout. So that'll bring up third and goal now. Nevada stop by number 46, Mike Crawford. 
Nevada defense doing a great job just stuffing the run right there. They've done a super job all afternoon. The linebackers doing a great job of gap defense. And Utah State is going to have to throw the ball here, I think, on third down because they haven't gotten anywhere on the ground. So expect them to throw it in the air. Utah State out of timeouts now. That's definitely a factor. If they don't, if they don't get in here on third down, they won't have enough time, I don't think, to set up anything else. So they're going to have to throw it one time for the end zone. If they don't get in, they, then they'll have a decision to make. Do we try to go for it fourth and goal, or do we bring in the field goal unit? Both sides consulting their sidelines. You get a good field level look at this. See the goal line and where the ball is just beyond the one yard, one yard line. Here come the Aggies. Mullins checking the defense. Look for play action. That's what they do. Mullins is grabbed. He throws. Is going down. Just got rid of that one. That was a giant sack. Had Payua and Miles gotten there just a little bit sooner. Deshaun Miles doing a great job. He has two. This is a special report from ABC News. Good afternoon. I'm Antonio Mora. There are unconfirmed reports out of Israel that Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin was shot as he left a pro-government rally in Tel Aviv. There is no immediate word on his condition, but there are reports that Rabin has arrived at a Tel Aviv hospital and that he is in the operating room. A group called Jewish Avengers has claimed responsibility. The attacker has also reportedly been arrested. We will bring you more news on this developing situation as warranted. This has been a special report from ABC News. They want to go for the touchdown. Offsides against Nevada. I haven't seen them decline the penalty yet. Here's where John Smith earns his money. Yep. And I think they're going to go for it. Patrick Mullins on the sideline talking to John L. Smith. Mm. Patrick Mullins is still on the sideline, but John L. is talking to him. That'll move the ball to about a half yard within the goal line. And here comes Patrick Mullins. They're going to go for it. And here comes Abu Wilson. He is back in after a long rest on the sideline. So do you take the points off the board? Boy, that, that argument goes on and on and on. I'll let you know in a minute. With advocates on both sides, sure. I think, I think this time they're going to go. I think you're going to run it. You may see a sneak. You may see something quick up the middle. But I don't think they're going to try to pass it. Maybe a bootleg on this play. Nose of the ball, just shy of the goal line. You get a stare in the helmet of the youngster Mullins. Quarterback keep, he dives in the end zone. He got it. A penalty and a miscue by the defense turns it around for the Aggies. A number of miscues by Nevada. This game will be tied up as we go into halftime and Nevada has very, very much dominated this first half and they will go in halftime a tied at 14 all We will get Paul Stewart hopefully in halftime with head coach Chris Alt and they will have something to talk about at the end of this first half. It has been a struggle for the University of Nevada, and they have played well offensively, but again, both sides of the ball not meshing. Micah Noor will try to add the extra point. High snap. The kick is blocked. You can return that. Yeah, it was David points. Miller. David Miller who blocked it, and now that'll be two points for Nevada. It's James Johnson who rolls into the end zone. So instead of tied at halftime, oh, it's 16-13. Oh. Wow. It was David Miller who came in and got a hand on it. The snap was high, so the set was a little bit late, and Miller gets his big paw watching. Big Daddy, 96. There you're right. He came right into the middle of your screen, and then James Johnson looked like he tried to bat this one ahead with his hand, and he did. James Johnson is the converted cornerback who sat out of football for a year down in Las Vegas, had an injury, came back from the injury, is now playing safety for the Wolfpack. Outruns the kicker. Mike Guider gives him a convoy down the sideline. And there's no way Crossland's going to catch him. And he tumbles into the end zone. Remember when they outlawed that play in the NFL, when the Raiders used to push the ball ahead, Dave right. Casper would catch it and then throw it in the end zone, somebody go cover it? That's right, and now in the NFL, you, you only can, uh, the, the guy who fumbles is the only guy who can recover his own fumble when they're inside the 10-yard line. And you certainly can't bat it forward like James right. Johnson did, but he picked it up on the good hop. So we've seen everything. Nevada leads 16-13. We have just five seconds remaining here in the first half. 
and Utah State will have to kick off. That's a little boost oh. for you going into halftime instead of going in tied. So now are you going to tell me whether taking the points off the board was the right thing, right? Sure you are, because they got, they got six instead of three. Right, instead of a 14-10 game, it's a 16-13 game, so it gives you an extra point. And the half point's so important, of course. <laughs> Billy Campfield walking the sideline. Van Dyke might get one more shot at this as Noor tees it all the way up. I thought maybe he'd screw it down. The Aggies go 67 yards in 13 plays in 3 minutes and 18 seconds. And the big play was the 52-yard pass reception to Frazier on 3rd and 32. And they go for 52. Wow. Noor kicking this one away from Van Dyke will be taken at the 18-yard line. And out of bounds, that should end. The, well, we'll have two seconds left. Donnie time. Morgan was the man who returned it. Time for one more play. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go up top here with two seconds. Why not? What do you got to lose? Remember last year we were in Boise at the end of the first half? The old hook and ladder? You think? Is that in the playbook? I don't think so. But not a bad time to think about it. Yeah, I remember that right before the first half, and that was a play, one of the plays that broke the, the backs of Nevada that night. Yeah, Nevada came back but just couldn't get close enough. And that was a very controversial play. No, Maxwell will just kneel down. The pack will take the three-point lead into the locker room. They will go their way. The Aggies will go theirs. And as soon as we can, we will go down to the sideline. And Paul Stewart, with full voice and uh, in fine tone, will have head coach Chris Alt to talk to. Paul, he's coming your way, so you've got it. Coach, a very interesting turn of events there at the end of the, the quarter there where John L. Smith takes points off the board successfully, but then the Wolfpack returns that two-point conversion. Well, you know, it, it, our backs were the wall. I thought defensively we really were playing well, Paul. Uh, and uh, to come up with that play at the end was a big play for us. The Wolfpack has dominated time of possession, and yet it's a close ball game. Well, you can dominate anything you want, but if you don't score points, it doesn't matter, Paul. And that's exactly what's happened. Our offense, uh, Mike's two uh, poor choices on his interceptions have really backed us up. Defense is playing well. We just got to get better the second half. Coach, what was the call on the uh, formation penalty that uh, cost the Wolfpack a touchdown in the first quarter? Well, they said that I, I think they got the formation screwed up. They said that the receiver was uh, was on the line, and that was Alex Van Dyke, who's a wingback. So uh, to us, we thought it was fine. Our guys in the booth said it was fine, but you never know. Okay, Coach, good luck in the second half. Back upstairs to you. Thanks, Paul. Our halftime score, Nevada 16, Utah State 13. Dana, that's the way it is here in Logan. We'll be back with the second half after halftime, but let's toss it to Chris Gargano back at News Channel 8 for all the halftime scores and highlights. Chris? Thank you very much, Dana. Welcome to the Wolfpack Halftime Report. We'll have all everything, including a visit with Ken Miner, the Wolfpack running back, coming up right after this. Wolfpack Football is brought to you by John Esquaga's Nugget Hotel and Casino, where John leaves nothing to chance. And by Jones West Ford, Nevada's number one truck dealer. Maury Distributing of Reno brings you this Budweiser moment. The game is more than strength and speed. There's a certain beauty, like a ballet, every move violent and aggressive, yet poetic and sublime. When you take hold of the ball, it's more than inflated pigskin. You're touching the heart and soul of America. You smell the grass ripped from the soil. Feel the hot sweat streaming. The sound of the crowd blast with excitement. And you know that the game has begun. Hi, friends. We have the inventory, and we have the prices at Jones Westport. Hundreds of used cars and trucks on sale. Take a look at these examples. Here's an 86 Honda Accord, 2049.83. 86 Dodge Colt Vista, four-wheel drive, 2039.83. 87 Chevrolet Nova, only 39.83. Don't let someone else kid you about their prices on used cars and trucks. Come on into Jones Westport, and you'll find out why we sell hundreds. We'll see you here. Concrete and paint. Concrete and paint. That was my world. I learned when to hold back. When to let go, when to act, and when to be still. It's where I drew my hardest, purest breath. Wolfpack basketball. Find your zone. Concrete and paint. For a few hours, that's what the world was made of. Call 348-PACK for season tickets. 
on the next home improvement while Tim's putting up a new dish is someone picking up his main dish. I've seen a guy in my house hitting on my wife. Don't you trust me? Is it jealousy? What is the matter with you? Or just bad reception? Why don't you and I have lunch together? Home Improvement. Coming up tonight at 7, right here on News Channel 8. I want to make buildings for real. And skyscrapers. Prepare yourself for college with U.S. savings bonds. Welcome to the Wolfpack Halftime Report. I'm Chris Gargan. Nevada leads 16-13 over Utah State. What a wild ball game. Let's talk high school football for a minute, though. Just a few minutes from right now, here in town, Wooster Colts. They host the McQueen Lancers in the first round of the AAA playoffs. McQueen beat Wooster in the first game of the season, 34-9. So the rematch is set. So that's your motivation, I'm understanding, to be fortunate. Hey, man, we're here. I can't believe it. Let's go out and win it, right? Yeah, we just play. What happens, what happens. <laughs> we were pretty slow at the start of the year, and, uh, you know, the kids picked it up, and we were fortunate enough to get through our division and make it back to playoffs. We haven't focused on until this week because, you know, we play it one game at a time, and now it's Wooster, and we're just focused on them. People have to go through Wooster if you're going to be a state champion, or they have to go through McQueen if you're going to be a state champion. It just so happens that we uh, both meet at the first round, and it should be one heck of a game on Saturday. Now the winner of the McQueen Wooster game will play the Reed Raiders who won their first round game last night in Sparks. A brisk night for Reed's Courtney Bossert. He's all bundled up and ready to see this game. Lance Metzger is quarterback on Reed's first drive looking for Mike Dupree, but Grant bolts in the way. It looked good, but he was flagged for pass interference. The Raiders must have gotten angry with the fouling Senators. Lewis Hill finds the hole. He goes 55 yards down the sideline and in. Reed goes up 7-0 in the first quarter. Hill ran for two scores on the night. Here's Metzger again after a Carson punt. He's looking for Dell Bates. Look at this throw. Look what Bates does. Drops the ball. Reed is set back for only a few seconds, though. Just go back to the ground to Mike Dupree. This time, one of his three scores. This one from nine yards out. It's now 14-0 Raiders. Carson did have some moments to remember last night, like this run by go-to man Bart Dover. He breaks free for a 58-yard scamper, but the Senators fumbled and couldn't score but the Raiders could. This Metzger keeper from a yard away put Reed up 21 zip. They advanced to the zone championship, beating Carson 42-0. You know, we wanted a shutout, and that's what we did. We wanted to score a lot of points so our second string could play. We did just that. Yeah, very pleased with the running game. It didn't seem to matter who's carrying the ball. The Hogs are pushing people around up front. Real pleased with the offensive line tonight. They did a tremendous job. You know, I think we could have got a couple scores. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot. We fumbled on the six-yard line a couple times. But, you know, we got the most out of our kids, and that's a very good football team, and I wish them the best. Uh, they're a class act. They, I'm really proud of them, too. They played a real good game. Another great college football game today. The 14th-ranked USC Trojans hosting their Northern California rival Stanford Cardinal today. You remember last week, the Trojans tied the University of Washington 21-all. Many thought SC would go for the win, but the team itself realizes a tie still has them headed for Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. Regardless to what people say about them tying, we're not in a national championship hunt. You know, we're not undefeated anymore, so the tie is just like a victory to us. We're satisfied. We'll have to just focus and, and play our best game. We'll have to play a letter perfect game. There will not be any margin for errors against a team that talented and that well coached. In pro football, the Dallas Cowboys might not have the services of Deion Sanders in Monday's game with the Eagles because of his re-aggravated hamstring. Now, the Cowboys know they won't have Leon Lett and Clayton Holmes because they've been suspended for four games because of a drug violation. Here's quarterback Troy Aikman's opinion. The approach as a football team is that we've had players get hurt before. Uh, players go down, they miss time, uh, and those players that are going to come in and, and, and fill their shoes are going to have to step it up for us. And then the players around them are going to have to play better. When we come back on the Wolfpack Halftime Report, we'll recap the first half highlights. We'll talk to Pack running back Ken Miner on a variety of topics, including his true love. Keep in mind, the Pack leads Utah State 16-13. Stay tuned. For two of the last three years, Capital Ford Mercury has been selected by their customers as the only dealership in Northern Nevada to receive the Chairman's Award for excellence in sales and service. At Capital Ford Mercury, we don't just say doing business your way, we live it. 
We used to have a heating problem. A cooling problem. If you have any home comfort problems, call Ray Heating Products, your independent Lennox dealer. Needed part of our house warmer. We needed part of it cooler. You may need a Lennox owning system from Ray Heating Products to keep different rooms different temperatures. Now my living room's not too chilly. My den's not too hot. And your energy bill won't be too high with a high efficiency Lennox system. Maybe now we'll take that island vacation. That skiing vacation. I'll take any vacation. Call your independent Lennox dealer for details on how to receive cash back instantly. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been kind of a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting a weave and you bob. Mm hmm They're thinking zig, you zag. Yeah. You're a bold man. The Whopper. It always tastes great because it's always fixed your way. With fries and a drink for just $2.99. Every day at Burger King. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rut mobile. No ruts, no glory. Technology has taken you to new levels, but nothing will take you farther than the technology in the new Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Loaded with major advancements like new styling, new safety features, and new capabilities. And now you can lease a Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $349 a month. So, with all this new technology, where do you go from here? Anywhere you want. Quality inspected Ford and Mercury cars and trucks below Blue Book every day at Capital Ford Mercury, and most come with a 90-day or 3,000-mile guarantee. Capital Ford Mercury on South Carson Street in Carson City. Capital Ford Mercury, we're doing it your way. Welcome back to the Wolfpack Halftime Report, where Nevada leads Utah State 16-13 at the half in a wild ball game. You know, Wolfpack running back Ken Miner was off to an incredible start this season, averaging close to 115 yards per game. He then hurt his ankle two games ago and hasn't played since. But he's back today and looks good, and he wants to stay in the lineup. Here's my visit with Ken earlier this week. I remember when Marcellus Krishan left. I mean, he was all everything here, and everyone said, could Ken Miner be the kind of back that he can? You've probably even done better than him. Did you think you could do something that well? Well, I know I had capabilities of uh, to having a better season than Sellers had last year because of the simple fact that he had, he had he, due to the same injuries, basically, you know, and uh, I don't know. I just, I just feel like when I'm in that starting role, I feel like, I'm, just, I'm unstoppable. Describe what the, the actual injury is and, and how it's developed and if it's got, it did, I remember it got worse a couple weeks ago. Where is it right now? Well, right now it's, uh, I'm like about 60% right now, you know, I, it got rolled and then I went back in and I played on it like then that happened. Then they start twisting it. Then that was, you know, that's what sort of re-injured it again. Some, someone, a friend of yours, told me something you might not know. I understand you're a huge basketball fan, yeah. and that's your true love. Describe that, that situation to me. Well, right now, it used to be my true love. I mean, uh, football is my true love now. I mean, back in high school in J.C. JC Ball, uh, I was a fanatic, you know, basketball fanatic. Right now, I love playing basketball. That's like one of my favorite pastimes, you know, to go play hoops. Uh, but right now, I'm more focused on football, you know, focused on trying to go to the next level and everything. What will you need to do to go to the next level the rest of this season and perhaps when you start trying out come the end of the season? I would need to put up some good numbers, you know, as far as for the rest of the season. It's got concern, you know, catch the ball, got to catch the ball a little bit more. I'm going to have to have, you know, more opportunities at catching it. So uh, I just got to got to do some some nice things got to make it happen basically okay and what, what can this team do this year how crucial is it for you to be in the backfield for them to do what their goals are set out to be well I feel like I feel like uh, I leave it all up to the old line you know they make they make me what I am today you know I mean I do I do some things sometimes when it's not there but they make me what I am today so I just give all praise to them when we come back on the Wolfpack Halftime Report, we'll have the first half highlights. The pack leads Utah State 16-13. Please stay tuned. Coming to Reno and Sparks, the four-wheel drive sale of the decade. Dick Donnelly is selling his Susan Rodeos for just $1.99 a month. It's true. You can drive this brand new rodeo with dual airbags for just $1.99 down and $1.99 a month. At Dick Donnelly, we've arranged special financing so everyone can afford a brand new four-wheel drive rodeo. $1.99 down, $1.99 a month for 30 months. It's just that simple at Dick Donnelly while they last. 
If your windows are aluminum frame, consider upgrading to the new vinyl technology offered by Custom Glass. It's an easy, affordable way to eliminate cold air drafts, reduce interior dust, keep noise pollution out, and save. And Colby & Colby wood windows and doors add style and value to any home. Or bring the outdoors in with a natural wood sunroom by Westview. Call Custom Glass at 329-4265 for a free at-home estimate. Trust the original Custom Glass of Reno. I came to Jones West Ford because my mother was looking for a car and she's usually intimidated by going by herself so I went with her and we came to Jones West Ford. We had no problem. They gave us the payments we needed and they did it with a smile. I would send my best friend to Jones West Ford because I know they would treat her the same way they treated me and that's good. Jones West Ford. One satisfied customer after another. She came in and she got a Ford and she's very happy. We are here at the Nugget to determine whether the new Gabe's Pub and Deli is more exciting as a pub and deli or because it's Reno's best race and sports book. We're measuring Galvanic's skin response, which tells us his general level of excitement. Oh, we've got a good reading in the pub here. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Go, 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 go. Yes, 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 yes! Our conclusion, come to Gabe's for the Pub and Deli, but don't miss the race and sports book. Welcome back to the Wolfpack Halftime Report. It is time now for today's first half highlights, and they're brought to you by Sedgwick Insurance Brokers. Here's the first score of the game. It comes quickly. Utah State goes 73 yards in six plays. It's capped by this Patrick Mullins to Kevin Alexander bomb. The Utah State Aggies lead this one early in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. But the Wolfpack offense would come back. Ken Miner with that hurt ankle, looking good, showing everyone he's okay, up the middle for 17 yards. The senior back would then finish the drive with this one-yard plunge. The Wolfpack ties the game at seven in the first quarter. Nevada's denied another touchdown on a penalty. Then Mike Maxwell's picked off by S. Wagner. This is at the end of the first quarter. The score stands at 7-7 on the nice return. Maxwell then finds his rhythm, looking for Steve McHenry over the middle. Number 87's got it for the big gain. But the pack gets turned away again. Maxwell's picked off again by Wagner. This time it's at the goal line. Max's 17th interception of the season. We move late second quarter. It's Miner again, this time on the draw, looking to set up a second pack score. Miner's dodging down to the nine yard line. Nevada then puts it in the end zone. Maxwell to Matt Kelly, and the McQueen graduate has the score, 14-7 pack. Utah State adds a score, then watch this. On the extra point, David Miller blocks it. James Johnson has it, number two. But with a little help from his friends, he goes the length of the field for the safety. Nevada takes the 16-13 lead at the half. That's where we are now. Remember, today's first half highlights are brought to you by Sedgwick Insurance Brokers, proud sponsors of the Nevada Wolfpack. The second half is next. Stay tuned. If you drink more than you planned and get into an accident where someone is badly hurt or killed, you could go to prison for up to 20 years. Don't do it. I'm David Houston. I'm Scott Freeman. A first-time DUI could send you to jail. A new law allows police to use force to take your blood. Don't drink and drive, but if you get into trouble and need help, turn to someone you can trust. At Houston and Freeman, we have over 30 years combined legal experience helping people in trouble. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so please call. So, the wedding's over, and now all you're left with is this silly video and 13 blenders. Sure, you could do the old return the gifts and get cash back routine, but that wouldn't get you that much needed set of wheels. Solution, your GMC truck dealer. Because right now, we're offering $300 cash back on selected GMC Sonomas. Kind of makes you weak in the knees, doesn't it? See your Sierra Nevada GMC truck dealer today. Oh, isn't that cute? What? You guys are like the three bears. You're double whopper, whopper, whopper junior, bing, bang, boom. I'm hungry, so what? Well, nothing just sort of struck me as funny. So what are you saying? I'm like the mama bear? <laughs> A whopper value meal for any size appetite. Starting at $1.99 every day at Burger King. That's getting your burgers worth. Hey, uh, baby bear, you gonna finish those fries? Yes. Ooh, somebody needs a nap. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. 
Wolfpack Football is brought to you by Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on Mill. And by your Northern Nevada GMC truck dealers. The strength of experience. We are back in Logan, Utah. Dan Gustin along with Dana Wagner. And as you see, the Wolfpack from Nevada leading the Aggies, the home team, 16-13 on a big play right at the end of the half on the block extra point, and then the long return by James Johnson for the two-pointer. University of Nevada has really dominated this game, but the stats really don't indicate that. Four big plays in the contest the way I see it, Dan. Two big interceptions by Mike Maxwell, and two big plays by Patrick Mullins, the quarterback. One for 48 yards and another big reception for 52 yards. You wipe away those four plays, and this is a blowout. Look at the passing yardage. Absolutely identical. Mullins and Maxwell, 146 apiece. The pack has had the ball a lot longer, but uh, as you see, look at 19 minutes and 47 seconds. But they've gone between the 20-yard lines. And the two turnovers is really the big stat there. You can see Nevada has just really controlled the ball and the tempo of this game. Third down conversion, six of seven, methodically marching down the field on their drives. The Aggies getting it in big chunks on their first drive of the game. They had that 48-yard pass reception to Kevin Alexander, the back, the backbreaker. And there is David Miller celebrating on the block, and you'll see James Johnson come in. This is right before the halftime, right after Utah State scored their touchdown. They're going for the extra point, and Johnson picks up the batted ball and goes the other way. And I still don't know what they call this, but it's two points for Nevada. It's a conversion attempt the other way. I don't know what the word for it is. You got touchdowns, you got field goals, you got extra points. I'm not sure what they call that. Get a look at our crowd. And uh, Dana, I was, the name I was trying to think of before with the Raiders was Dave Casper and was it Pete Banizak who used to push it ahead and recover the ball. But regardless, it'll count for two for the Wolfpack. Our man on the sideline is Paul Stewart, and we've got a halftime update from Paul. Gentlemen, Coach Alt stressed that every game from here on out has championship implications and it needs to be addressed as such. 30 minutes of hard-nosed football. They also talked about the possibility of a reverse to Van Dyke, so keep an eye out for that. And an update on injury side, st starting strong guard Bob Cooper took a knee to the back uh, when Oscar Galloway ran up his back earlier in, in the game, and he cannot get down in his stance. So he is probably uh, going to be out for the rest of the game. I talked with Cooper on uh, Thursday evening, and he told me his back was already hurting. So Cooper's back already hurting and re-injured now, and Coop's going to have to sit down the second half. That's a big loss for the Wolfpack. And a big loss for their running game. Uh, Ken Miner was 77 yards in the first half. So the pack to get the ball as we get ready to start the third quarter. Norris kickoff again will go into the end zone. Van Dyke will bring this one out. Behind the wall, we have a flag down and Van Dyke will go down at his own 29 yard line. Away from the ball, we had a flag thrown. Usually in that vicinity, it'll go against the return team. So this one may come back. One score, yes, it is against the Wolfpack. One score I wanted to fill you in on. Number three, Florida taking on Northern Illinois. 51 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Florida favored by 49 points of that game, but only up by 20 or 31 right now. And Steve Spurrier said he was going to call off the dogs early. But whatever he has done, he's not been able to rein them in totally. Get another look at the return by Van Dyke and see if we can pick up the penalty. It'll be to the left of your screen somewhere. He took that one in his own end zone, but Utah State, he saw that Utah State was not even close to him, so he decided to come out and bring that one out and got behind the wedge there and got some good yardage, but they had to bring it back on the penalty. Line of scrimmage will be the 17-yard line. Play fake by Maxwell on the roll. He throws... Again, it looked like he, that ball looked like he didn't grab it. It wasn't firm in his hand. He might try to shot put it out there, and he had Van Dyke open, but just underthrew him by about five yards. He had two guys wide open, Van Dyke and McHenry. Very unlike Mike Maxwell first half, 16 of 24, completing 67% of his passes, which is very much like him, but only 146 yards, well below his average, and two interceptions. And those two interceptions have been huge in stalling Wolfpack drives. Second and 10. Maxwell waits and then dumps it off to Miner. Miner makes some real plus yardage, getting eight yards after the catch and run. 
That'll bring up a third and two for the Wolfpack. They're six of seven in third down conversions, and they dearly need one here to get out of their own end. Maxwell, time to throw. When he has time to throw this afternoon, he's done quite well. But Utah State has pressured him at times this afternoon, and that has caused him to release the ball a little bit early. The interception's an indication of that. Stopped just short of the tackle made by Sean Coleman. Again, the Aggies jump. That's Crossland who got across the line of scrimmage. The snap immediately, and Nevada had two to go for a first down. They should get it on the penalty, obviously. That's the fourth time that Mike Maxwell and Jeff Hadwick have worked that play. Offsides against Utah State, and that'll be first and ten now. You see Crossland just crossing the line. Reminder, we'll be on the road next week down in Stockton, California, as the Pack plays the University of Pacific. Our final television game. And then it's on to basketball next year. Pack has the first down on the penalty at their own 31. Again, play fake. Maxwell rolling to his left this time. Throws to an open Van Dyke, who got a good block from McHenry. And Alex, uh, eating up the yardage, will get inside the 45 to the 43-yard line of the Aggies. McHenry's a good blocker. We saw him uh, earlier this season. He got our big blocker award, and he just uh, provides another great block for Van Dyke this time. There's only one guy out there to cover two guys, and once Van Dyke makes the catch, great block on Hudson. Nevada with six penalties, and uh, Utah State with nine. Pack penalized 33 yards, and the Aggies 82. Checking the numbers coming in, the Aggies were penalized 19 times more this season than Nevada has been. And that's holding true again this afternoon. Kenny Miner trying to run right. Got a good block from Rogers. Boy, what a great block. And Miner will lower his head and get inside the 30. Keith Rogers, who is in the lineup at guard, just kicked his man out, made contact, and maintained contact. Rogers, 78 on your screen, did a super job. You're right against David Gill, the linebacker over there, in the lineup right now for Bob Cooper as a hurt back. Ken Miner had a super first half, 16 carries, 77 yards, so he's answered all questions about that sprained right ankle. Still not 100%, but you couldn't tell it by his stats. Pack on a long drive to start the third quarter. They lead 16-13. Miner, boy, just ricocheted off that attempted tackle. Robinson doesn't miss very many, and we were touting his uh, defensive exploits in the first half, but Danilo came in, and watch Kenny Miner just ricochet off him. You know what's surprising, too, in the first half, Nevada actually outgained Utah State on the ground. Utah State known as a running team, Nevada known as a passing team, but so far the Wolfpack is getting the job done on the ground, and the Aggies are not. Robinson came in, had a one-on-one -on -one tackle, and just couldn't hang on, and finally David Gill, the middle linebacker, had to make the stop. Gain of seven, it's second and three. Max, three-step drop, throws left side complete to West. And Cornell weaving his way inside the 20, or inside the 15-yard line. Cornell has all the moves, doesn't he? Maxwell now 19 of 28 for 197 yards, so he's closing in on 200 yards now this afternoon. Mike Maxwell looks like he feels a little bit more comfortable there, and Cornell does so many things after the catch. Does a great job in the true freshman Craig Miller to get by him, but just too much pursuit by the Utah State Aggie defense. Get a good look at Cornell West. I'll tell you, he couldn't catch a pig in an alley. He's so bow-legged that it run right through him. <laughs> I'll tell him you said so. On the ground, Oscar Galloway looking for contact. He gets it at the 10-yard line. Finally, the Aggies gang up and stop him. Kenyatta Green along with Crossland and Gill. Ken Miner will come back into the lineup, and Oscar Galloway will come back out. Ken Miner, 18 carries now for 96 yards as he closes in on 100 this afternoon. He averages 114 and a half a game, good for 21st in the country in that category. Big, important part of that Nevada offense. Another thing about Kenny Miner, after sitting a couple weeks, he has been sure-handed. He has not let that ball go to the surface this afternoon. Miner's grabbed by the helmet. Yeah, that, there comes the flag. Face mask. Grabbed by the, the front, as you said, the face mask, and pulled straight forward. You know, I mentioned uh, in Kenny Miner's last game that he played three weeks ago that he hadn't fumbled, and about two plays later, he did. Let's see if you jinx him this time.
Kenyatta Green, the big middle linebacker, third on the team in tackles, 71 coming into the contest. But that time he needed a little help from the face pass to get Ken Miner down. I think it was an accidental one. They'll mark that out five yards. And a closer shot at it, and Green had some shoulder pad, but you did see initially you did see Miner's head come forward. And that's usually a very big indication of the face mask being grabbed. And just a five-yard penalty, inadvertent. Well, the Pack trying to take it the distance and score on the opening drive of the third quarter. You might remember way back when, back this morning in Northern Nevada, it was the Aggies who went on their opening drive for a score. The Beatles Anthology is coming November 19th, and so is your chance to win the Beatles Anthology CD. Keep watching News Channel 8 and listen to the X or Oldies 104 beginning Monday for more details. Some original songs coming out from the Beatles. Is that what they went, yeah, yeah? It was some, that's from your era. That's right. You remember. Vaguely. <laughs> that was a few years ago. Pack leading 16-13. Max getting some conversation on the sideline. He's back in the offensive huddle. First and goal on the penalty. The ball at the four-yard line. Boy, that Aggie defense has been jumping around all afternoon. As soon as they get set, Van Dyke goes in motion. Maxwell looking for Van Dyke, and the defense did a great job. Hudson, along with McCain, would not let the backs out of the backfield so they could get to the corner of the end zone. They just kept them contained, and Maxwell had to wait till somebody opened and never did. You're exactly right. Left side of your screen, number 25, Oscar Galloway. What's bad for Nevada is they have two receivers in the same position right here. They're trying to separate them a little bit, but the defensive backs wouldn't let them separate. Good job by Utah State. Second and goal, still at the four. On a quick count, Galloway. Good block from LeGraff, and Galloway goes in on the score. 74, Brandon LeGraff came and kicked his man out, and Galloway ran right behind that block. LeGraff had to come out of the Louisiana Tech game a couple of weeks ago with a contusion in his leg, but he looks strong as ever now. The junior college transfer was a little nervous in his first game this season, as any athlete would in their first Division I game, but he sure has come on. Number 74, left side of your screen, makes a super block on David Gill to spring him into the end zone. Shea so far is two for two. Missed a couple of extra points early in the season. Since then, he's been perfect. The good snap, the hole by McHenry, and the kick is good, and the Wolfpack is on top, 23 to 13. Their opening drive here in the third quarter, they go the distance, and uh, with 10.43 to go, we'll return to Logan after this commercial timeout. Hi friends, Jones West Ford made a special purchase of new Ford Escort. We're receiving over 100 new Escorts, and the factory to help us sell them is offering 750 cash rebate and financing at 9.9%. You receive both. So if you thought you couldn't afford a new car, well, come on in to Jones West Ford, because we're going to sell all 100 of them cheap. We're passing the savings directly on to you. No one sells new cars for less than Jones West Ford, so come and see us. Using up all your luck looking for parking? Come to the Nugget. We've got 1,252 free spaces in our cool and covered garage. Here in Logan, Utah, there's some celebrating going on, but it's in front of the Wolfpack Partisans, the cheering squad down to our left. And you see them at the bottom of your screen there, just behind the score, the pack leading by 10. Classic Nevada drive, 83 yards, nine plays, four minutes, 17 seconds. Just drive it right down the field. And I'll be interested to see what Utah State does on offense now. Shea again with a short kick. Wilson coming forward quickly, we'll take it at the 19. And Abu just runs into a big crowd and goes down. Gets to the 25. So far, it has not been his afternoon. And you're right, Damon. Dana, what do they do? Do they go to the pass game, or do they go to their, their premium back 
Abu Wilson. Abu Wilson, the number one running back in the conference, having no success in the first half, only 15 yards on seven carries, but he has traditionally been their strength on this team. Or do they continue with the pass? Patrick Mullins throwing for 146 yards in the first half. Do they try to establish a pass, or do they try to go back to their traditional strength in Abu Wilson? Alexander in motion comes way out right of the formation where he sets up. Out of your picture. Here comes Wilson. Toss it to him and let him do what he does best. And finally, Mike Crawford, who was tied up with a block downfield. The center, Travis Guiney, had an arm on him, but uh, Crawford came across to make the stop. And that's what Utah State did that time. Just give it to Abu Wilson deep in the backfield and let him pick his own spot. Let him try to find a hole if he can. Wolfpack defense did a great job of stuffing the run in the first half. Super job. They just got burned on two deep uh, pass completions. That's the only problem they had in the first half. Wilson got eight, trying to get the other two. A block in the back. Alexander was blocking Miles, but Wilson just gets back to the line of scrimmage, just barely. You're right. That was a penalty on Kevin Alexander that they did not call. A block in the back, right in the nape of the back of number 30, Deshaun Miles. And there's Miles right there, and Wilson, you could see, shoved Miles to the ground. Alexander shoved Miles to the ground. A loss of two for Wilson. It'll bring up a third and four now. Aggies at their own 32. Pack shows blitz. They come from the outside. And a soft throw to the middle intended for Griswold incomplete. Sean Griswold is quite a story. Played tackle last year. They moved him to tight end with now playing a tight end. He has played six positions for the Aggies. Defensive line. He was center. He had both guards. We mentioned the tackle. Now tight end. Utah State now forced to punt on their first possession. Three and out. A big stop for the Nevada defense. They'll get the ball back. Dana, you were talking earlier about what the Aggies would do to test their character. That might have been the big defensive play of the day for the Wolfpack, forcing Morreale to punt. Again, Wilkins calls for a fair catch and dives to the surface at the 32-yard line. So at least he hangs on. Nevada will have another opportunity with 9.21 remaining in the third quarter. And the Pack leading 23-13. We'll be back to Logan, Utah for more Wolfpack action. It's the most advanced 4x4 sport utility ever built. The new 1996 Jeep Grand Cherokee in stock now at Reno Jeep Eagle. With new interiors and standard features like dual front airbags, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, premium eight-speaker sound system, and available 5.2-liter V8. And check this special introductory lease that has just been announced. Test drive the new 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee now in stock at Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on meal. Yes, you will. Here's your wake-up call, nature lover. If that didn't work, try this. Now, for under 19000 get a classic Jeep Cherokee with 190 horsepower, no-charge air, four-wheel drive, quadro-link suspension, and driver's airbag, all for less than 19000 Now, if that didn't wake you up, try this. See your Northern Nevada Jeep and Eagle dealers. Another great view of this area in Logan, Utah, and the pack on top. 23-13 will have the ball. Philadelphia Eagles battle the Dallas Cowboys this week on Monday Night Football right here on News Channel 8. Should nope. be a super football game. Yeah, USC against UCLA, isn't it? Rodney Pete against Troy Aikman. That's right. All over again. All over again. You like the Eagles, don't you? No. I, plus the points I do. They're getting two touchdowns. Pack at their 32-yard line. Kenny Miner swiveling those hips and backing his way to the 37. That'll be a five-yard game. Matter with two more games remaining in the regular season. We mentioned next week down at Pacific against the Tigers in Stockton, then come home to play the San Jose Spartans for maybe the last time in quite a while. This this is the big game. If either team wins out. Utah State or Nevada, they go to the Las Vegas Bowl. Mentioned that San Jose, there's nothing on the schedule in future years to play this part. Again, jumping around the quick snap, and Crossland, if he's caught again, he is going to see that in his dreams tonight. He's going to say, I'm trying to be aggressive, and every time I move, they throw a flag at me. And he's going to go to the sideline. Yeah, and he's going to hear an earful from John L. Smith over there. Kenny Miner, 19 carries for 101 yards. So he's over the 100-yard mark. 
And Nevada will be very close to the first down. It'll be a second and one. Jeremy Hunt Loveless. Uh, Hunt Loveless, the last name, just came in the lineup when Crossland left. He's quite a story. We'll talk about him a little bit. Miner, again, shaking a tackle, gets a line of scrimmage, but that's about it. I still think he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. Eddie Davis almost had it behind the line of scrimmage, 56 for the Aggies, but couldn't quite grab any cloth. And Miner didn't get much further than that, but I think he has enough for the first down. Yeah, it did get a good spot, and we're, we're looking from up here. The spots have been a little bit better than what we have seen anyway. A lot of penalties in that UNLV game last week with Nevada. This week, Utah State, 11 penalties for 92 yards. The Wolfpack, just six penalties for 33 yards. You're right. Miner does get the first down. And there you see the graphic on it. Utah State, uh, five of those coming on offsides. I think Ben crossland has been called for three of those at least. He has. Remember, though, you know, the thing about him, he's been aggressive. When Johnson returned that block kick for the two points, it was Crossland who was actually gaining ground at the end, an offensive, or excuse me, a defensive lineman who was trying to chase the guy down. You get a good shot at Crossland in the three-point stance. So there's no quitting that guy. Maxwell rolling to his left. Downfield for Wilkins. Oh, he had it and dropped it right in his bread basket. Good coverage by Coleman. Coleman had that right arm on him, feeling him all the way. DeMond has not caught a ball this afternoon. That's, I mean, that's a tough catch to make, but the ball did hit him right in the hands. But there's a lot of pushing and shoving going on at the end of that play. Wilkins, same situation last week against UNLV. He did not catch a pass until the fourth quarter, and then he had two touchdowns. Maxwell rolling out to his left, riding himself, and then throwing it long downfield. Great coverage that time by Sean Coleman. But the ball did get there. Second and 10, pack at their own 42. The draw again, minor. That time David Gill would not let him get away, stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit. That Gill's quite a story. That 44 you see in your screen there had 25 tackles against Utah last week. 25 in one game. I mean, that's a handful. Somebody had to make a lot of them, and he was the guy. He also had uh, a 39-yard fumble recovery versus Utah last week. He was the Big West Defensive Player of the Week last week. That kid could play. He's been named Defensive Player of the Week twice this season. Yeah, we talked about him in the pregame show from Pleasanton, California. Very pleasant individual also. Third and 11. Dump it to Miner. Major collision with Miner and Hudson, and they both get up. Boy, Mike Hudson came in and made that stop. So Nevada will be stopped. They will punt for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, Jason McLean hasn't been punting very much at all the last three games, and this is the first punt of the afternoon. Miner had plenty of room out there, but three guys closed on him fast, including Hudson, and made a major hit on him. Jason Bandy is back at his 10-yard line, left-footed McLean, averaging a little over 38 yards a kick. Great snap to him. He has time. Floats this one up to Bandy. Bandy at the 12-yard line. Hesitated. Now gets outside and got a little bit of room momentarily. It was Holman who brought him down. We're in Logan. The score, Nevada 23, Utah State 13. We'll come back for more of this third-quarter action right after this timeout. Doing what you like can be a lot more fun. When you do it in a 1996 GMC Jimmy. The new 96 Jimmys are here and are priced thousands less than the competition. Hurry into your Sierra Nevada GMC truck dealer today. Oh, you didn't get tomatoes? Nah, I've been kind of in a rut lately. You know, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Whopper, no tomatoes. Change your pace. Exactly. Expecting a weave and you bob. Mm hmm They're thinking zig, you zag. Yeah. You're a bold man. A juicy flame broiled Whopper for only 99 cents. Every day at Burger King. Now that's getting your burgers worth. So, you out of your rut? I believe I am. 
You're rutless. Enough with the ruts. You've been ejected from the rutmobile. No ruts, no glory. You get a look at the cheerleading squad we were talking about, and the score, of course, the Wolfpack leading 23 to 13. And uh, coming up Monday night, we'll have a behind-the-scenes look at Monday night football. Very interesting with interviews from the announcers and some behind-the-scenes look that you never get to see. That's coming up Monday night at 5 o'clock here on News Channel 8. Aggies at their 14-yard line. Mullins looking right side all the way, throws to Alexander, and he is helped out of bounds. Kind of a late hit by Lamont Porter, but no flag goes down. Alexander, seven catches now for 98 yards, and Mullins has had some success through the air. He is now over 150 yards on the afternoon. Alexander, their best receiver, he leads the team in catches per game. In fact, he is sixth in the nation in catches per game, and he is 10th in the nation in yards per game at over 101 yards. This kid is, is a dandy. So uh, Porter come in late after Alexander was out of bounds. The Pack is lucky they didn't pick up their seventh penalty. Here comes Wilson. And Miles is there to meet him at the 21-yard line. Deshaun's having a great afternoon. When they let him blitz, he's got to Mullins a couple of times, not for sacks, but for rushes. And there he makes another tackle, and that brings up another third down for Utah State. They went three and out on their first possession here in the second half. Let's see if Nevada can turn the trick again. We mentioned it a lot earlier, but Abu Wilson has been averaging 136 yards a ball game, and he is struggling just to get the yards that he can get, he had only 15 at halftime. Mullins, great play by Tawan Hall, intercepted by Yearwood, and Julian will score. The sixth interception of the year for the Wolfpack. We talked about big plays in the first half, and they went all the Aggies way. And the first big play here in the second half goes to the Wolfpack, and credit that one with Tawan Hall with a super rush on Mullins. And then Yearwood with a good hands to haul it in and ramble for the touchdown. Get another good look at it. Only the sixth interception by the Wolfpack defense this season. Two by a linebacker and now one by a defensive lineman. Julian Yearwood. So Yearwood goes 19 yards after the interception and Shea will try to add the extra and make it 30 to 13. And that's what's been missing from the Nevada defense this season is the big play like that. They really haven't had any. Kick by Shea is good. And that is our score, 30 to 13 in favor of the visiting Nevada Wolfpack. 531 still to play in the third quarter. We'll be right back to Logan. your windows are aluminum frame, consider upgrading to the new vinyl technology offered by Custom Glass. It's an easy, affordable way to eliminate cold air drafts, reduce interior dust, keep noise pollution out, and save. And Colby & Colby wood windows and doors add style and value to any home. Or bring the outdoors in with a natural wood sunroom by Westview. Call Custom Glass at 329-4265 for a free at-home estimate. Trust the original Custom Glass of Reno. To apply for a car loan, simply pick up the phone and dial 1-800-CAR-LOAN. And in less than two minutes, you could be approved for your car loan. From the privacy of your living room, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you've had credit problems and you need help, call 1-800-CAR-LOAN. Getting a car loan has never been any faster or easier than right now. 1-800-CAR-LOAN. It's over the phone. And it's in less than two minutes. Call 1-800-CAR-LOAN now. Well, the cheerleading squad has had something to cheer about here in the second half as Nevada has tacked on 14 points after the intermission. We'll get another look at their most recent touchdown. Right side of your screen, 42, Tawan Hall. The hand to the face, the guy who causes the interception. Yearwood, just the recipient of it, standing there. And the ball f fell in his arms, and the Wolfpack defense comes up big this time. Reminiscent of John Payua's interception against New Mexico State in game two, where he almost got into the end zone. Yeah, that time Yearwood didn't have anybody to run over. Payua did, but remember he's talked about that, said, well, I wasn't sure, and this <laughs> uncertainty didn't get him in the end zone. Right, the quarterback tackled him, led better. <laughs> the kick by Shea. Wilson. This is a special report from ABC News. Good afternoon. I'm Antonio Mora at ABC News in New York. Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin was shot at a pro-government rally in Tel Aviv tonight. Reports now that he has died. ABC's Bill Redeker is on the telephone from Tel Aviv. Bill, what's the latest from there? 
Uh, Prime Minister Rabin's media advisor, Eitan Haber, has just told reporters at a Tel Aviv hospital that the Prime Minister has died. Haber says an emergency cabinet meeting has been called and will be held within the hour. Eyewitnesses say the shooting occurred at close range as Rabin was departing a massive peace rally held here tonight in Tel Aviv. A suspected gunman has been arrested. He is identified as a 27-year-old Israeli university student from Herzliya, just north of Tel Aviv. A small group of right-wing protesters attended tonight's rally, but it's not known if the gunman was associated with it. Rabin's Labor Party organized tonight's rally, which was held to show public support for the ruling party and its ongoing peace process with Palestinians. Once again, according to the Israeli Prime Minister's media advisor, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin has died. Thank you, Bill. ABC's Jerry King is at the White House. Jerry, what's the reaction there? Well, the reaction here is outrage, and that even before news of the death of the Israeli Prime Minister was announced. Mr. Clinton heard of the uh, shooting from Ambassador, from uh, National Security Advisor Tony Lake. He has been in constant touch with the U.S. Ambassador in Israel and also with Secretary of State Warren Christopher. Before he got news uh, that the, uh, before we got news that the uh, Israeli Prime Minister had died, Mr. Clinton asked for uh, Americans to join him in prayers, and I'm sure that will be redoubled now. Antonio? Thank you, Jerry. Please stay tuned to this ABC station for further news from Israel. We now return you to the football game. This has been a special report from ABC News. Well, we're back live. We've had two running plays. One went for a minus one, and that run on a double reverse by Ivy Russell went for 26, and you're up to date. First and 10 Aggies at their own 48. Mullins throw off the fingertips incomplete. Trying to hit London McBride, the tight end over there. Mullins had time to throw, but he just threw high. So it'll be second and 10. Mullins out of the shotgun. Throws over the middle. Oh, boy, in and out of the hands of Alexander, and he knows it. He knows that he was alone once again. The last time he was alone, he had a touchdown. You folks in Reno are a step ahead of us on this breaking news. We could not hear what was happening during that special report, so we were just getting the news to us now about Yitzhak Rabin. Yeah, being shot, and that's terrible news. Yes, it is. It's just... Very disheartening. The trouble they've had in the Middle East, and they just can't seem to solve their problems, sit down and work things out. Third and ten, Aggies. Utah State at their 48-yard line. Well, they want to go deep again for Alexander off his fingertips. Boy, they just sent him on a fly, and Hassan had him, but Hassan was about two steps behind him, Dana. That play has worked a couple of times when they've had a linebacker lined up with Alexander. Deshaun Miles just couldn't hang with him, and even Darnell Hassan got burned on this one, but the pass was just a little bit overthrown. Mullins had to rush that one a little bit as the Wolfpack sent seven that time on an all-out blitz trying to get to Mullins. Alexander was a primary receiver. He was the only guy that Mullins was looking at. That little number four, Alexander, has the same kind of speed as Alex Van Dyke does. Murray Alley's kick will be taken at the 15. Good seam to the outside. Wilkins will finally be chased out of bounds over his 45-yard line. Morielli's had a terrible day punting today for Utah State. Morielli averaging 40 yards per attempt this season. Last week against Utah, almost 47 yards a kick. But today, he's had wobbly kicks. He, uh, that one was short and low and uh, gave Damon Wilkins plenty of time to run that one back. Well, we've been told from our master control, my producer, that uh, Ravin was shot three times and it has been confirmed he has been killed. Sorry to bring you that kind of bad news, but bring you up to date what's happening elsewhere across the world. Football's important, but sometimes other things take precedence. Nevada on a first and 10. Kenny Miner again struggling for yardage. Miner will get a very tough two. Let's see if they give him forward progress to the 48. That would mean three. And they spot it. He'll get three yards to the 48-yard line. That'll make it a second and seven. 
We're in the third quarter, the pack leading 30 to 13. Yes. Nevada goes with their quad receivers for the first time in a long time. Two to the top of your screen and two to the bottom. Not much pressure as you see Maxwell just standing and waiting. The release pass to Miner. Miner, it takes three to get him down. Finally, David Gill gets him down. The first two could not. Ken Miner is a man driven. He wanted to play last week against UNLV, but wasn't 100%. Chris Alt wanted to save him for this game because he knew that they would need him for this game. He thought that they would be able to win the UNLV game without him, and he was right. But they knew they needed him for this game, and that's a perfect indication of why. He runs so hard. Paul Stewart gave us an update earlier in case you weren't with us at the time. Bob Cooper has had his back injured, so Keith Rogers has been playing at guard. Rogers, LeGraff, Hadwick, and the tackles Thorpe and Rockwood. Van Dyke finally run out of bounds right about midfield. Wolfpack leads 30 to 13, 237 remaining in the third quarter, and they look like they have this one in hand. They're on another drive here in the second half. Wobbly pass out to Van Dyke. Got a little block out there, and they love to get him the ball in the flat with a little running room. He's short of the first down, so the Wolfpack will have to punt now. Jason Bandy. Set back at his 10-yard line to return the punt of Shea, who had a 39-yarder on his first punt here in the third quarter. Here's the second one off the side of his foot, but it curls back in the field of play. Will bounce and roll inside the five, and there is West. Cornell West will down it right about the one-yard line. Super job by Cornell. He has so much speed. He, he's a great guy to have on your kick coverage team because he gets down the field so fast. And he did that time. He was ready to make the hit on Bandy if he decided to receive the pump, but he didn't. And it took a perfect Wolfpack bounce down to the two-yard line. So a nice 48-yard kick for Jason McLean. The Aggies had a couple blockers there, and uh, they looked a little bit confused. They didn't take care of Weston, that it kept him out of the play. The ball would have rolled into the end zone. Get ready for powerful comedy as Tim Allen stars in Home Improvement weeknights at 7 o'clock, except during Monday Night Football, of course, right here on News Channel 8. Nevada's taking a timeout. The ball is officially at the two-yard line. We have 2.28 to play here in the third quarter, and, of course, the pack leading 30-13. to 13. Here's a final score from Florida. Number three, Florida, beats Northern Illinois from the Big West 58-20. to 20. Starting quarterback Danny Werfel did not play all day because Steve Spurrier, the head coach down in Florida, decided that they didn't need to play Werfel, didn't want to pour it on. Second stringer went all the way, and they win by 38. You know, Dana, I was watching down when you were reading that. Mike Guider is really struggling down in front of us. Tony Merrick has been working on him, along with the team position on the Wolfpack side of the field, about the pack 32-yard uh, line or so. And that's a key loss because his backup, Juan Givens, is out of the lineup due to that one-game suspension for the fight last week against UNLV. So untested Don Morgan has to come into the ballgame. The freshman, the 5'11 freshman, has to come into the ballgame with only 16 tackles on the season. Has not seen a lot of playing time, but Morgan pressed into action right now in a critical situation. Yeah, Guider trying to walk it off as he is shaking his uh, right leg. Somewhere, but Morgan is in at the uh, left corner. From the two, on the ground, Wilson will get to the four. That's all. Boy, Nevada's defense, if you can salute them for anything this afternoon, it's been the way they have stopped Abu Wilson. The Beatles Anthology is coming November 19th, and so is your chance to win the Beatles Anthology CD. Keep watching News Channel 8 and listen to the X or Oldies 104 beginning Monday for more details. From the four-yard line, Wilson comes left and he just struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, Nevada defense making it tough and closing off. You get a look at Mike Guider with his helmet off working on the sideline trying to walk whatever that pain is on his right side trying to get rid of that. Maybe Paul Stewart can get over there and check that out. Maybe he can find out uh, if Guider's going to return to the lineup or not. He looks like he's okay but I don't know if he's a... Look at all the offensive linemen standing in the foreground. They're all smiling. They have reason to be happy. See Rockwood and Thorpe with their hats off. Third and eight from the four-yard line. Mullins out of his end zone. Going up top for Alexander. He's got distance. He's got it at the 40. It's going to be a foot race. And James Johnson pushes him out of bounds. Kevin Alexander, again, extricating the Aggies from a deep hole. 
Well, we've seen that a number of times this afternoon from Logan, Utah. Kevin Alexander scores the first touchdown for Utah State on a 48-yard pass reception during the Aggies' first possession of the game. And then Mullins here had a little bit of time, rushed right at the end of the play. But Alexander turns on the Jets, and he has so much speed, he can just outrun the Wolfpack defenders. But how many times are the Wolfpack going to let a, a receiver get beyond them? 74 yards for Mr. Alexander. He is single-handedly having an offensive afternoon for the Aggies. Alex Van Dyke has eight catches for 107, or Alexander, excuse me, has eight catches for 171 yards. Mullins wants to throw. This one's intercepted and dropped. Oh, boy. Mike Crawford, did you see the way he went down with his right leg pinned behind him? He's yep. lucky he's even getting up. This Watch what Crawford they, slide, Dana, excuse me. This is what they talk about, the Wolfpack defense being in position to make the plays, but just not making the play. Crawford right there, I mean, that ball hits him right in the hands. And when you, you called it his interception, it looked like he was, inter, he was gonna make the interception. Look at him sliding. And his knee, his knee did buckle underneath his <sighs> leg like that, underneath <sighs> his body. Ricky Brumfield, way at the top of your picture in the left-hand corner, doesn't play much but another speedy receiver as they have three to the opposite side of the field. Mullins out of the gun. Throwing underneath, there's Alexander. Hit and driven backward. Deshaun Miles making the sure tackle. And you notice that silver stripe on Deshaun Miles' helmet. It's called a Silver Stripe Award, the most prestigious award for a Wolfpack player. Only three guys have it on the team, and you get it for dominating your opponent two straight games. You have to be nominated by your coach. And what a great job Deshaun Miles does here. And he just loves to hit, stick, tackle people. In fact, he handed the ball back to Alexander and said, hey, try that one again. Yep. He's, he, that's why he's a, a striker award winner. Third and eight. The blitz comes. Mullen stays in the pocket. On the out, the completion. Good. I'll have a first down at the seven-yard line. Aaron Frazier with the grab. 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Aggies on the march again. This drive started their two-yard line, and Mullins picking out open receivers as they continue to march down the field. Garnett Overby makes the tackle in front of Hassan over there on the left side. First and goal from the seven-yard line for Utah State. This one's not over yet. No, pack on top by 17, but here come the Aggies. A draw. Wilson. Threading his way to the goal line, he should be in. Is his knee down? Touchdown. Yeah, they give him a, two officials closer to it. The far official coming from the left side, the top of your screen, the one signaling touchdown. Utah State with a chance to get within 10 now in this ball game as we get close to the fourth quarter, one second remaining in the third. And Abu Wilson did most of this on his own. You can see why he's the league's leading rusher on the draw play up the middle. Worked his way through and did not go down after the first hit and got into the end zone. Overby, the injured player for the Wolfpack. Let's get another look at this and we'll talk about Garnett. Nice call on the draw play. First and goal from the seven. And Abu did a super job. You see James Johnson, the safety on that play, had a chance to stop him short but didn't. The other thing we saw, if we get another look at that, is uh, Darnell Hassan was being grabbed and held by the jersey and just held. Now we get a chance to talk about Overby, who's going to be helped to the sideline. So talk about the secondary being very thin. Look at Garnett. And as Overby comes up to the sideline now, mm. Malik Blythe or Doyle Holman will come into the lineup to replace him. Another couple of untested guys in the secondary, and that's all the Wolfpack needs at this point is another injured secondary guy. Mike Guider is already out of the lineup, but now Guider comes back in at the corner spot. Aggies down by 11, will go for two. Mullins throws, goal line. Alexander was in the end zone and came out to make the catch. He didn't score. I thought he had the two. He was in the end zone, made the catch, and obviously the official said he made it from the field of play, not across the goal line. Boy, Kevin is just really discouraged. Look at the field level, look at it. You're right. And was did he have possession oh, of this yes. across the goal line? He sure did. Oh, yes. That's he was in the end conversion. zone. You're right. That's a two-point conversion. Wow. The Aggies, they're going to agonize when they see that on film this week. The coaching staff is going to be very, very disappointed, and rightly so. Well, let's go to our man on the sideline, Paul Stewart. Paul? Good news and bad news. I'll check on the condition of Garnett Overby in just a minute. But uh, Mike Guider, as you saw, went back out on the field for that play. He had a 
had a cramp in the back of his right thigh, and he's going to be okay. He just needed to walk it off. I'll check on over before you. Thanks, Paul. We will find out about Garnett, but uh, the Aggies, uh, boy, talk about turns in the ball game. They would be down by nine. Now they're down by 11. I'm surprised they went for two there. Why would you go for two there? If you kick the extra point, then you're down by 10. 30 to 20. You're within a couple of scores of winning this ball game. And that's, the, I think, the important thing. A tie doesn't do them any good. A loss and a tie, they need to win. So they've got Knorr, who's a great field goal kicker. If it comes down to the end of the ball game, if they get a touchdown and a Knorr field goal, they win. They get 10 points. I think that would be their thinking. At least that's uh, what I'm surmising. So Van Dyke will be, again, deep. He's taken one out of the end zone and down one. The guy we're talking about, Knorr, will kick off. Micah, boy, that ball explodes off his foot. Again, deep in the end zone. Van Dyke, back near the end of the end zone, will just kneel down. And the final play of the fourth quarter coming up. One second remaining in the third quarter, rather. Nevada, once again, will start at their 20-yard line. Their first touchdown of this third quarter was from their 20 when they... Didn't they go from the 20 to 80 yards on the drive? If I remember correctly. A little bit longer, and I think it was 83. They started from their 17 after the penalty, and then their You're second right. touchdown came on the turnover when Julian Yearwood ran in the interception for the touchdown from 19 yards out. Maxwell on the offense from the sideline with this play to end the third quarter, they hope. The play fake to Miner. Maxwell looking sideline, and uh, Van Dyke shadowed by Hudson. That is the end of the third quarter with the Nevada Wolfpack leading 30 to 19 over the Aggies from Utah State. We're at Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah. We'll be back for the final 15 minutes. After long, short, long, short. Short, long. Short, long, short. Short, long. Short, 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 long. Short, long. Long Short. No minivan offers you as many choices as America's best-selling minivan. End of message. The new Dodge Caravan. See your local Dodge dealer. This is the new Wild West. With car stereo sound rooms, they're going to sound just like your car. But wait, Brad, the new store's not ready yet. Besides, we've still got loads of brand new stereo and video product to sell at the moving sale. Save from 15 to 50% off at Wild West current location. Everything must be sold to the bare walls. This sale is like none other you've ever experienced. Wild West has to sell it all. Nothing will be held back. So get to the moving sale at Wild West current location, 2640 South Virginia. And we get a good look at some people having a good time. They're on the Nevada side here in Logan, Utah. The pack leading by 11. We've got an update on the sideline, Dana, that uh, Garnett Overby has a hit pointer, and it's doubtful whether he'll be back or not. That's a big loss for Nevada. Obviously, they haven't played well in the secondary this afternoon, but they need all the help they can get, and he's a starter. The other thing that's important for them is ball control. Now, take some time so that that defense doesn't have to be out there long if Overby doesn't reappear. Maxwell got Van Dyke open at the 30. And Alex adds 9 to it after the catch. That was uh, actually Steve McHenry on oh, the catch. Oh, excuse me, it was McHenry. We haven't called his number very much this afternoon. Van Dyke has received most, most of the attention from Mike Maxwell, and Maxwell did a good job of finding the open receiver that time. McHenry had a huge week last week against UNLV. This is uh, their second leading receiver on the team. Came in with 12 touchdown receptions on the season. Yeah, I just saw the eight and assumed it was Van Dyke the way he was moving. You're right, it was McHenry, number 87, not 86. Minor, great hole up the middle, and look at him drag McLean with him. Markel McLean hung on for a pretty good ride to midfield. Number three getting number three. Check this out, Dan. Nevada's out rushing Utah State, and Utah State is out passing Nevada. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at no, all. It surely doesn't. That's the kind of game it's been, though. It's been very strange. Huge hole for Ken Miner that time. The offensive line does such a super job of opening up holes for him. Well, Keith Rogers, who got some playing time, you know, spotting throughout the season, is now in there in a role with Bob Cooper gone, and he has not let down a step. That time, it'll be a tripping call against Miller as Cornell West worked on him early in the game and then worked back on him. 
and Cornell, that ball was in an area that he could have caught it, and the flag went down. And very unintentional pass interference by Miller that time. Their feet just got tangled into it. Here are the Commercial Hardware third quarter stats, brought to you by Commercial Hardware and Marietta Tool, where you'll find everything from ace to Z. You can see the first downs there. Marietta really has dominated the this game in many aspects, down. but the two early turnovers in the first half hurt them. And a couple of big plays through the air. Utah State has had three plays go for more than 50 yards in this game. Well, actually, one went for 48, but three plays for almost 50 or more. Yeah, those big long completions to Alexander have made their numbers look respectable. First and ten pack. At the Aggie 34 yard line again, Maxwell just turns and gives to Miner. Making the tough yards, he'll get to the 31, a gain of three, second and seven. And Utah State goes over 100 yards in penalties now as a team 12 for 107 yards. And that has really hurt them too. That doesn't show up on the official stat sheet, at least on the stats that we just showed you at the end of the third quarter, but you have to tack those on. And those become meaningful now as time continues to wind down. Three or 13-37 remaining in this contest. Nevada leading. They're up by 11. Kenny Miner again weaving his way through the line of scrimmage, the defense closing down on him. That time it was uh, Danilo Robinson who makes the stop, number 97. And right now they're just trying to churn up the clock. Third and five. I think they're in four down territory here though. This is a little bit outside of Shea's range. Ken Miner, the workhorse on the ground, averaging almost five yards a carry. He has 120 yards and we're not done yet. Just about his five yard average on the 25 carries. And it's third and five. Miner, three straight calls. Grab, hit, and then spun away. And he'll be just short of the first down but there were two opportunities. We're talking about sloppy tackling for the Nevada defense, and the Aggie off the defense isn't doing a lot better. Well, and Ken Miner does, has, a, has a lot to do with that. I mean, he just makes people miss. I mean, look at him darting and spinning, and he just does a super job of getting the extra yards. He should have been stopped for no gain, but with his ability, he gets close to the first down, and they're a yard short, and they're going to go for it here, fourth and one at the 25-yard line. Yeah, Stenson was the guy 94 who had an arm on him, but that's all he had. Back with their two tight ends. Let's see if they try to freeze the Aggies once again. Crossland's in there. He doesn't jump, and a Maxwell and the keeper, second, third, and fourth effort, but I don't know if it's enough. It's going to be close. Depends where they blew the whistle, because initially he did not have it, and then he leaned forward and got it, and then he lost the football, but they blew the whistle before he lost the football. Now, there's Maxwell, number seven. It's all stuffed up in the middle, and then he gets the lean to the right, and if they keep that thing going, you can see that he gets awfully close to the first down before they blow the whistle. This is going to be very, very close. Remember that measurement we had at the other end of the field was an eyelash away from a first down? This one might even be a little closer. And we're talking about inches right here. 11 minutes, 57 seconds remaining in this game. And they're short. They sure are. The Aggies with a stand. Now reflect back on that two-point conversion. Utah State gets the ball back, down by 11 points, and this one isn't over. I mean, the Aggies did a great job of just stuffing it up the middle, and then Mike Maxwell tried to get around the right side, and there he actually has the first down. Then he loses the football, but the whistle had blown before that. The thing that Utah State did better than Nevada, they got lower. You saw the, the guard, McGrath, who didn't get as low as he needed to get, and he got pushed right into Maxwell. First and ten out of the shotgun, Mullins. Steps up with a bullet, and that one's knocked away as Miles was face guarding the intended receiver. Miles was in the face of Aaron Frazier, and Frazier really couldn't get back to the ball. Miles has been locked up in coverage a lot this afternoon. A couple of times Utah State has burned him, but that time he did a pretty good job of coverage, and uh, the ball had to be just thrown perfectly, and it wasn't, so it was an incomplete pass. Doyle Holman is now into the lineup to replace Garnett Overby at strong safety. Holman, number eight, the J.C. transfer comes in, and he'll be tested now, along with the other J.C. transfer, Mike Guider, who plays left corner. A couple of guys they brought in to shore up their secondary this season. 
Second and ten. Utah State wants to go to the air. A little screen complete. Oh, boy, almost a great play, but enough of a play by Paiua to not allow a big gainer as London McBride on that middle screen was about a step away from a lot of distance. How does number 99, John Paiua, let him get free here? Good job of sloppy tackling by the Wolfpack. You'll see the McQueen High School graduate just hasn't ripped up or wrapped up and doesn't take him down. McBride does a good job of getting free. Mike Crawford there is to clean up the mess. All that, Nagina won third and nine. This time they keep some protection in for Mullins. Nevada shows blitz. Here they come up the middle. They throw up the seam on man coverage. There's Alexander makes the grab, and he'll be inside the Wolfpack 45. Boy, Mullins saw it coming all the way. He saw we have a flag back at the line of scrimmage. He saw the blitz and knew he had man, and he was looking for Alexander. Nevada sent seven people, but it won't matter. It's coming back holding against the Aggies, so it'll be third and 19. But I'll tell you, that puts a defensive back in a tough situation when you got to guard a guy like Kevin Alexander, man on man. And the Aggies have got to think they've been playing on the road because they are just not getting the things that should go their way. And there's John Smith, obviously not happy about it, but John L., one of those guys really doesn't get that perturbed. He's got a pretty easy constitution. He goes both ways. So it's third and 20, but we've seen Utah State extricate themselves before from a third and long situation. So you would think that Nevada would be able to hold here, but Chris Alt knows that it's not a sure thing. Well, earlier the blitzing bothered Mullins. It's not bothering him now, so I wouldn't ex expect to see them come after him again. Drop into coverage. This time, the ball is blocked by David Miller. Miller was looping, went to the outside, came all the way around the offensive lineman and was in the face. In fact, watch him. He's in a full gallop when he gets to the quarterback. Boy, he's having a big day. He's the guy who blocked the extra point that went the other way for two points for Nevada, and he was in Mullen's face in a hurry that time. Got another block, and somebody was looking to pick it out of the air, but no one was close to it. So Nevada holes on a third and long. Now it's fourth and 19, 10 man front. Maury Alley's had a poor kicking day, gets his foot into this one, but doesn't get it to turn over. It bounces, rolls across the 50 where it's picked up, and Wilkins is smashed by Hudson. DeMond gets to the 49 of the Aggies. Nevada will have a short field to work with here in the fourth quarter. 10.35 to play. The pack's still on top, 30 to 19. We'll return to Logan, Utah after this timeout. So the wedding's over, and now all you're left with is this silly video and 13 blenders. Sure, you could do the old return the gifts and get cash back routine, but that wouldn't get you that much needed set of wheels. Solution, your GMC truck dealer. Because right now we're offering $300 cash back on selected GMC Sonomas. Kinda makes you weak in the knees, doesn't it? See your Sierra Nevada GMC truck dealer today. Concrete and paint. Concrete and paint. That was my world. I learned when to hold back, when to let go, when to act, and when to be still. It's where I drew my hardest, purest breath. Wolfpack basketball. Find your zone. Concrete and paint. For a few hours, that's what the world was made of. Call 348-PACK for season tickets. Well, you get a shot of the crowd across the way and a little bit of shot of the Wasatch Range. It has been a beautiful afternoon to sit and watch a football game, although the people that are here rooting for the home team can't think it's that pretty because they have had some problems today. And one of the major problems has been in terms of penalties. Mike Maxwell not having a super afternoon in terms of what he normally puts up on the board. The two interceptions, the big number against him today. But in terms of penalties, Utah State 13 for 118 yards and some key ones that have killed him. And what's happened is they have allowed the Wolfpack to maintain drives, you know, on those offside five-yard penalties. On a third down situation, Nevada's been able to maintain it. Kenny Miner getting a lot of work. Gets inside the 45 to the about the 43-yard line. And expect him to get a lot more work as we have 10-24 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. Nevada with an 11-point lead, and they'll just try to salt it away. 
And Keith Rogers comes up a little slow, and they can't afford to lose him because he's replacing Bob Cooper, who's out with a bad back, so they can't afford to lose his back of Rogers. Yeah, the only other guard they've had brought on the trip, I think, was Pat Freeman, the, uh, the young sophomore. Miner gets five. He maintains that clip. Again, they'll call on him, but nothing that time as he slides into second base. Robinson was waiting for him at the 45, and that's where Kenny Miner tried to slide under Danilo. C-97 getting up. And Utah State knows that Nevada's going to try to salt this one away, too, so they're sitting on run a little bit. But I wouldn't be surprised to see the Wolfpack go up top here because they need a first down to keep this drive going. They're, they have it uh, third and six now. Clock moving. We have nine and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Chris Salt, as he continues to do, walk the sideline. They'd feel a lot better if they had seven more. They lead by 11. Four wide receivers. Maxwell coming back left side. Threw it before he looked. It was intended for Wilkins. Great coverage by Coleman. That time Maxwell trying to look off his receiver. Threw it before he looked over there. And Wilkins was well covered. It was a bad pass by Max. He actually uh, overthrew him. I mean, he, he led him too much. And Coleman was right there. He almost made the pick on the play. Bandy once again is deep. Let's see if McLean tries to drop it and get that uh, that touch inside the 10-yard line. Nice snap by Hadwick, a little bit low. Left footer puts it high in the air, trying to kick it for the corner. Bounces at the four, goes oh, laterally and out of bounds. Boy, what a great angle. McLean had that ball hit point first and head for the sideline, so he pins the Aggies very deep once again. We will take a timeout. We have nine minutes and five seconds to play. The pack leading 30 to 19. We'll return to Logan after this timeout. I was impressed at Jones West Ford with everyone. And, you know, they made me feel like a family. You know, they didn't try to pressure me into buying a car. They let me make my own decision. And, you know, it felt great. You know, I was, I was really satisfied with everyone. I came to Jones West Ford because I wanted to establish credit. When I got here, I did just that. It was very simple. I got what I wanted. I walked out of here comfortably and it didn't take long. Jones West Ford, one satisfied customer after another. I was able to make my decision without having to feel pressured. Ever since John Mesquaga upgraded his casino, visitors to the Nugget aren't so quick to eat and run. They're staying with the 1,500 generous slots, 6-9 video poker, single deck 21, and Reno's best race and sports book. Yep, folks are finding it hard to leave. Of course, others are finding it hard to stay awake, but John will fix that. Okay, who wants coffee? Play at the Nugget and leave nothing to chance. Well, we're here at Romney Stadium where we've been all afternoon. Dan Gustin along with Dana Wagner in Nevada's defense has the Aggie offense pinned way back near their goal line. But the line of scrimmage will be about the three-yard line. This Utah State team really is an enigma. I yeah, mean, they, they are. They lose to Arkansas State, one of the worst teams in the country, and then beat Northern Illinois later in the season. I mean, Northern got hammered today, but they've been a pretty fair team. Wilson at the line is pushed back. He just gets to the line of scrimmage, and then the defense is awaiting on him. Holman was the guy who got it. We'll go to the sideline. We've got an update from our man on the sideline, Paul Stewart. Paulie? Things are getting a little bit thin for the Nevada offensive line. I don't know if you noticed on one of those last plays, but Keith Rogers, who's in there replacing Cooper, was hobbling around a little bit. Tony Merrick, the trainer, trainer yelled out, hey, son, you got to go. We have nobody else to go in there. Take Ben yeah. aspirin, do it. That's right. Get him back up. He got a warm body. Take his pulse and put him in. Well, Wilson will get a very hard-earned one yard. Aggie offense, look, at late in the ballgame, they're struggling. They need to take a timeout to set their offense. Mullins will go to the sideline and talk to John L. Smith. You see him on a trot on the way. John L. Smith, they're so successful at the University of Idaho. They've had such a long run in the Big Sky Conference, successful coaches and offensive schemes. For a while, back in the, in the early years, they called it grass, uh, grass basketball when they had uh, Erickson and then Gilbertson and then uh, John Smith because it was uh, fan them out, spread them out, and throw the ball around. They had some pretty good quarterbacks up there. John Freeze comes to mind. He's back playing with Erickson now in Seattle for the Seahawks. And they could use him back now. I, Mullins has thrown some good balls today, but he's been inconsistent. He's had open receivers, and if he would have picked out some receivers that were open and hit him, I mean, Utah State might have a lead in this game. 
we got a, a, a number earlier on Maxwell was about half of what he's been averaging with 220 yards is what he's thrown for so far today. And Mullins, 14 of 28 for 241 with a touchdown. And his main guy has been Kevin Alexander, nine receptions for 175 yards. He had that one 48-yarder, then he had a 72-yarder. So Alexander's been getting his in big chunks. Aggies back to the field of play, out of the shotgun. Mullins, five yards deep in his end zone. That throw is incomplete, underthrown. Doyle Holman on the coverage from El Camino Real High School in Woodland Hills. I think the guy we haven't seen today, and he must have been injured. I didn't see it on the injury chart, but Sean Turner, who was their leading receiver last year with 43 catches, has not played a down this afternoon. And there was a flag in the end zone. I'll have to see what the call is here. They're marking the ball at the uh, two-yard line. Now they're going to bring it out. On the offense. Penalty is declined. Decline. Third down. And that'll bring him third down now. Ball at the original line of scrimmage. Apparently it was not holding in the end zone because if it is, that's a, a safety safe. call. Exactly. That's two more. And that might be the holding on the right side of your screen. It looked like. Yeah. Hmm. If Tough that was. Tell. Yeah, if that was, that was in the end zone. Again, Mullins. Knocked down. That time, Miles got his hands in front of it, and another batted pass. Deshaun Miles, we talked about David Gill, and you mentioned his 25 tackles last week. Miles had a great afternoon so far. Oh, he's having a super afternoon, Dan. That was a tough pass to catch, and even if he hadn't have been there, I don't think it would have been a completed pass. Not a very good pass by Mullins, but no one open on the play, so the Nevada offense is going to get a chance to work with it again with fairly good field position. Morreale in the end zone, just inside the back line. Gets a nice spiral off that Wilkins waiting for at the 43, trying to come to right. He gives ground, goes all the way back to midfield. We've got two flags down, and Wilkins will be hauled down. There's another flag. He'll be hauled down way back at his 49-yard line, so he lost six yards on the reception. I think we're going to have an illegal block in the back by Nevada, by the return team. We will take a timeout. 8.01 to play. Nevada leads 30 to 19. We'll be back in Logan. It's the most advanced 4x4 sport utility ever built. The new 1996 Jeep Grand Cherokee in stock now at Reno Jeep Eagle. With new interiors and standard features like dual front airbags, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, premium eight-speaker sound system, and available 5.2-liter V8. And check this special introductory lease that has just been announced. Test drive the new 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee, now in stock at Reno Jeep Eagle. You'll save more on mill. Yes, you will. Okay, you two, I want you to listen up. I love you guys. I want you to have the best. That's why I went for the Whopper. Extra pickles, no onions, because that's what you want, because I love you guys. I mean it. The flame broiled Whopper for only 99 cents every day at Burger King. Now that's getting your burgers worth. Only the best. I don't care what it costs. Dad. Wasn't this Whopper only 99 cents? Value's an important concept. That's why I'm doing this for you. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. We'll see the return by Wilkins, and Veterans Day's coming up, and watch the flags that fly here. <laughs> There's two, one on each team. The first one is an illegal block in the back by Nevada, and then watch at the end of this play. Watch Wilkins' head just yank around to the left. That is a face mask penalty against Wagoner. So the penalties will offset, and Nevada will get it first to 10 in Utah State Territory, just across the 50-yard line. Again, Nevada offense huddling up on the sideline, ready to come back in. And this is where they want to eat up some clock. 8.01 remaining, an 11-point lead, and expect to see Ken Miner running the ball. So they don't offset. If they did offset, they'd have to re-kick it. Wait a minute, they're going the wrong way. Right. The face mask is against the guys in dark blue, not light blue. Utah State declined the illegal block in the back because they do not want the penalties to offset and then have to re-kick the ball from deep in their own end. So they took 
the face mask penalty, and they'll move it five yards closer to the goal line for Nevada. Well, now they're going to go over and talk to John Smith because David Gill, who's the captain on the field, said, no, that's not what we wanted. <laughs> so that's O'Kane, the way they called it. O'Kane will go over and talk to John L. And we'll see what we have. We're supposed to be back in Reno tonight about 6 o'clock. As, uh, would you say yesterday takes two hours to fly over here and ten minutes to fly back? <laughs> well, because of the time change. <laughs> and it's, what it it's like two hours and ten to get over here and then ten minutes flying back because we take off at about six o'clock and then we land at about six because of the time change. Now well, they're still sorting it out and now let's see, Nevada will have the ball at the 46-yard line of the Aggies as a first and ten. Trying to use as much of the eight minutes and one second that's on the clock as they possibly can. Ken Miner, big cog in the wheel now. Number three in the backfield, 28 carries, 127 yards, and expect them to run to him a lot now as they try to chew up some of this clock. So that takes Miner, what, over 800 yards for the season in seven ball games. Here he comes. Miner trying to move the stack and does so as he gets inside the 45 to, it looks like, the 43-yard line. Van Dyke, the national leader in catches per game and yards per game, is below both in both categories today. With 10 receptions, he is almost two catches below his per game average. And with 94 yards, he is more than 60 yards short of his per game average in that category. So Van Dyke not having a Van Dyke day. If he doesn't get that other six yards, as we get a look at the penalties doubling for Utah State, it will be the, only the second time this year he hasn't gone over 100 yards in receiving. Maxwell got him. looking for you know who knocked down Van Dyke was there but a good defensive effort boy Wagner has two interceptions nearly had a third super play by Spencer Wagner the free safety on that side and if he doesn't come in to make the play Van Dyke makes the catch this will come from the right side of your screen Spencer Wagner is number nine your free safety and Maxwell doesn't see him come over to help on the play but if he doesn't come over to help Van Dyke has the corner beat on that side Hudson he might, had he not run into his own man, was juggling it long enough that he might have come down with it. Well, I like him a lot. We did not see him last year in Reno, but Wagner, as a junior, has another year. We'll see him next year. He flies around back there at free safety. Maxwell on a third. Throwing, juggling, and McHenry, oh, what a catch. McHenry got a foot in and made the catch for the first down. Critical third oh. down play. McHenry wasn't even open on the play. Maxwell kind of forced it over there, right side of your screen, number 87. McHenry kind of batted the ball in the air to himself and made the catch. Now, did he make it inbounds? Did he have the catch before he mm. went out of bounds? Boy, that is that is tight. Look, his back foot was in that wide area. Yeah. And it's hard to tell from that angle, too. Holding against Nevada, so it's going to come back. Now instead of first down, it'll be another third down. Let's get another gander at that and see if we can see definitively or not. One more look, but it doesn't matter anymore. There's his right foot inbounds. Does he have possession? Boy, that is tight. Yeah, I think he did have yeah. it inbounds. It's hard to tell. If they had the replay rule like they did in the NFL, I don't think they'd be able to overrule it. They'd still be talking about it, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Now it's third and 18. Maxwell. Got a man, it's Wilkins. He had it and then dropped it. And now they're calling it incomplete. I thought he well, made the catch and then fumbled it. The official further downfield thought it was a fumble because he got West, followed West with the ball. Let's take another good look. Devon Wilkins, number five, left side of your screen, and he had it for a moment. Did he have possession? Right there, he has the mm. ball, looks oh, like, yeah. right there. And then the ground knocks it loose. And the ground loose. causes a fumble. That's a catch. He fumbles it, but the ground can't cause the fumble. But if he had fumbled it, another Nevada player was there to get the fumble recovery. McLean, who didn't punt until the second half, is going to be busy once again. Bandy is deep. Jason hangs it up. Bandy runs under it at the 17. And then is spun down after a pretty good return. A 10-yard return by Bandy. Aggies will get it, and we got a timeout. The Wolfpack leading 30 to 19. We're in the fourth quarter. We'll be back to Logan, Utah. 
At Reno Dodge, it's been our promise that we can give you more car, truck, or van for less money than anybody else. And now that our 96s are in, it's still true. Even on new 96 models, we'll still double your down payment up to a grand and also double your trade-in amount up to $3,000. That's $4,000 from us to you. And it's available to every single customer who walks into Reno Dodge this week. All you gotta do is ask for it. And this is first quarter action. Ken Miner with the ball trying to go to the outside. Watch what happens to him. He's swarmed by about four or five Utah State Aggies and forced out of bounds. Drop by Don Weir's Reno Dodge this week and mention our Ram Tough play of the game and get an additional $425 off the price of a new Dodge truck. Aggies get another shot at it. They trail by 11. They have enough time, 652 to play. You know, the series between the two schools, Nevada leads with seven wins and two losses, and the losses came in years with the number five in them, 1915 and 1950. That's right. Long time ago. And they've only played three in recent years since Nevada joined the Big West Conference, and Nevada's won all three. Mullins has time. Underneath, that's Ramos. Miles makes the initial hit and then gets some help. And he'll be awfully close to the first down, but I think he's just short. Utah State needs two scores to win this ball game, and there is time for that. Mullins now will have to go to the air, though, to march the team down, and Ramos came out of the backfield to make the catch there. He hasn't been used that much by Utah State until this game. He actually replaced Abu Wilson in the second quarter. This time he gets a carry, and there is Tuan Hall. Boy, playing big defensively in the second half. Tuan wraps him up and throws him for a loss. That was second and short, and that'll bring up third and short. Utah State trying to run the ball, move the chain, and stop the clock. But now they're in danger of losing the football here if they can't get in a yard here on third down. Mike Crawford shaking up. He got up. He wanted to stay in the ball game because he's such a tough character. They finally get him out and put John Payua in for him. So they will check out Crawford. Nevada's gotten more dings in this game than any game so far this year. Third and short, they go to their key man, Alexander. He has the first down as Guider guides him out of bounds. Guider's been burned deep a couple of times in this ball game, and he's determined not to let that happen again. So he's giving Alexander a huge cushion over there, and Mullins and company will be able to get that all they want now toward the end of the game here. You can't really see it here, but Guider's giving him a 10-yard cushion out there. He's well off him when Alexander finally does come up to make the catch. And Mike also playing him to his left shoulder, his inside shoulder, not letting him come back towards the middle of the field using the out-of-bounds marker. And there goes Alexander on the fake. I watched him all the way. He made Guider bite on the outside and then turned it upfield. And luckily, the defense had rolled that way because Alexander with a great move on Mike Guider. I'll tell you, Alexander's having a huge day. 11 catches, now more than 200 yards in the afternoon. And Guider did. He bit on that one. And just after the words got out of my mouth that he wasn't going to be burned long, he was. So another painful experience for the Wolfpack secondary. Romney Stadium record for pass receptions, 14 in a ball game. The way Alexander's going, he might get close. Out of the shotgun, Mullins. There's Alexander. He's 12. He might get close. I said earlier, now he's got two to tie it. And that's his favorite receiver, Alexander, the number one receiver on this team, and one of the best in the country in terms of average catches per game and yards per game. And he'll just work the underneath stuff on Darnell Hassan that time. The eight yard grab makes it second and two. 11 points, so you now have to start thinking and calculating. What do you do? You score a touchdown, you go for two? Yep, you have to. Because in the field, go with tie it after it, that. That's right. Again out of the shotgun, Mullins has time. Goes deep for Alexander, touchdown! Alexander, the man on this march, he has another touchdown on a perfectly thrown ball. 13 catches for Alexander on the day, and he's having a Van Dyke type of day. And now Utah State is within uh, five points, and I'm sure they'll go for two here on this possession to get within three, so a field goal with tie at 4.55 remaining in this contest. They're not out of it yet, and a straight fly for Kevin Alexander, and he beats Hassan. We get a look at the 22-yard touchdown. 
from the end zone. No jukes, no fakes, just straight down the sideline. And a perfectly thrown ball by Patrick Mullins. Go for the two as Mullins rolls right, looking the end zone. Ball batted and knocked away. It was Tawan Hall again who got his hands on it, and then Holman made sure by knocking it away. So make it a 30 to 25 game. They have been exciting between these two schools and nothing new here. We talked about it during a break, but I guess this is time to talk about it again as we see the extra point that doesn't, is not successful. Holman was there for the coverage anyway on Sean Griswold, the tight end. So even if that had got uh, passed to Juan Hall, it wouldn't have got passed to uh, Holman. So now Utah State needs a touchdown to win this game. A field goal does it no good. A field goal would have tied it if they would have had the two point conversion there. 4.55 to go and now a big moment for the Nevada offense here, Dan. We talked about it in the break, but time to talk about it again. The Nevada offense seems like when there's no sense of urgency on the field, they sit on it a little bit, but now maybe there is a sense of urgency. Well, there certainly is to control the ball. You have just under five minutes to play, and if they should go three downs and out, well, that's what the Aggies would love. So you have to control the ball, and you, you use the right word, uh, words, a sense of urgency is so important to say, okay, now we need to go down the field, we need to march and score, much like Louisiana Tech. A little sense of concern there on the face of Jeff Tisdale, the assistant head coach, and Utah State made it look easy. Six plays, 72 yards, Alexander doing much of the damage in under two minutes. It just took a minute and 57 seconds, and that's the problem with the Nevada defense. They give up scores too early. If they were able to take at least a little more time off the clock, that would have helped the Nevada offense. But with 4.55 remaining in this game, still plenty of time for Utah State to get back into this one and win it. Nor, again with kind of a line drive kick, he doesn't get this one in the end zone, and Van Dyke will return it from the three. He gets to the 25, and they wrestle him down from there. So the Aggies with some fire. The special teams making the play. Now they're going to call on their defense, number one defense in this conference. So that's who you want out there. If you got your best out there to try to stop the Wolfpack, very talented and high-powered offense. Last couple of drives, Nevada has come out running on first and second down. Let's see if they go to Mike Maxwell, who has 220 yards passing on the day. Let's see if they go back to the air, try to move the chain to chew up the clock that way to the air. They go on the ground. Very short gain for Kenny Miner. He will get two. So Nevada, a dichotomy. They want to use clock, but they've got to move the ball. They can't go conservative. And the people who left Romney Stadium are missing a good one. 30-25 Nevada with 4.30 left in this one. Ken Miner, just a simple off guard play and no room to run there. So they're going to have to go to the air, I think, if they want to chew up some clock. Well, that's what they do best, so why not use it now? Maxwell goes to Van Dyke. He's got it now to bounce at the 40-yard line. That'll get him a first down and move the sticks. They just soon he stay inbounds yeah. there. Been a good time for Van Dyke to just go down on the field of play, and even though they stopped the clock to move the chains. But I'm, it's nice to see that Nevada isn't going into a shell right now. It's nice to see that they didn't run that when it was second and seven, and that they go to the air. That's what they do best. You're right. Cornell West is back in. He is just out of your picture to the top of the screen. Van Dyke is alone on the other side with Hudson. Miner stumbles over a blocker, but got five yards on a tough carry. Picks his way up to the 45-yard line. Under four minutes to go in the contest. Maxwell being outthrown by Mullins today. Mullins over 300 yards. He has 313 yards through the air. 19 of 35. He's had a very successful day. That's about 100 yards over his average. Well, Dana, on the other side of it, we'll get it after this play. We've got an update on the receiving records here at Romney Stadium. We'll talk about that in a minute. Quick count. Miner will be dragged down. He'll be short of the first down. The stadium record is 15, not 14, as I said. But there has been a new record today. The receiving record, the yardage, for Alexander, 236 yards. The old record was 224, and that was uh, eight catches by Craig Clark in 1972 against Utah. So Nevada with a third down and a yard coming up. Clock moving to 3.05. Aggies want defense. Linebackers are tucked in. David Gill right in the middle. 
Miner comes right. He sneaks under the tackle and he gets to midfield and that's just where he had to go. Gets the ball across midfield. I think he's got it, Dan. I think he has the first down. It, of course, it depends on the spot, but the nose of the football is on the 50, and it looks like it's going to be enough for the first down, mm. and they're going to call for the measurement. They're going to get the sticks over, and we've seen three very, very tight measurements in this ball game, and we have another one coming up here, but I think Nevada has enough yardage for the first down, and there's a little bit of concern on Chris Hall's face. Sure is. Might have lowered his center of gravity as he was about to be hit, and did he get enough? We will see. He did. First down. By the length of a football. And that's a big one because it keeps the drive alive. I don't know if he would have had enough guts to go for it fourth and short there at midfield with 251 because if you turn over the ball here in this situation, Utah State has the short field to go in and try to win this game. Now remember, the winner of this game has the inside track to play in the Las Vegas Bowl. If Nevada goes on to win, all they have to do is win one of their remaining two ball games to go to the bowl game. And both these teams have been there before. Nevada lost the first time, and then the Aggies won the next year. Miner slipped through a seam, but it looked like the defense was waiting for him to come to him, and he found a little hole over the left side. He will get a tough two, second and eight. Timeout on the field. Time being a factor now, 227 remaining in this contest, and we've seen this from Ken Miner all day, cutting across, trying to find the opening. And timeout, I think, called by Utah State. They will only have one remaining in this ball game. So one more first down by the University of Nevada, and that should be the ball game. I know talking to the coaching staff this week, and you get a good look at Kenny Miner uh, from Sacramento coming back after a two-week absence. They thought that this was going to be a very tough, hard-fought game. And the, the way it looked, if Nevada would have stopped the miscues, they should have been on top 28 to 7 by halftime and should have cruised in the second half and it just wasn't the case. They came out early in the third quarter and had their offense in full gear and then when they got the big cushion it seemed like as you said they, they went a little lackadaisical kind of let off the pedal and the Aggies kept coming and finally got back in it. Well they scored on their first drive and then they got the big turnover for the touchdown and made it 30 to 17 and it looked like the game was over but the offense went a bit of a shell. Utah State didn't. Of course, they, had, they couldn't afford to do that. They came out throwing, and they marched right down the field, and now we have ourselves a ball game. One more first down, though, and this game should be over. Utah State only has one timeout left, and they dearly wish they had that other timeout that they had to call deep in their own end earlier in this half. Back with three wide receivers left of the formation. That's to the top of your screen. Aggies playing the run. There is Gill blitzing, and he pulls Miner down back on the Wolfpack side of midfield. So Nevada trying to run it out. The Aggies take a timeout. That stops it. It should have stopped it with 217. The clock moves to 216. Nevada, if they're going to win it, they're going to have to throw for it. They're going to have to throw for that first down. Utah State's final timeout. That brings up third and 10. And I think it's a very interesting situation right now. You're the head coach. You call pass, it sounds like. We'll see what Chris Hall calls. See David Gill, 44, yep. sneaking across? There he is. Now, Utah State has run a lot of six and seven man lines today. and David Gill is a linebacker, but they take a chance there, and they put him in a gap, and they just send him. He's a linebacker. Now, of course, if he doesn't make that play, it allows Ken Miner to maybe get some extra yardage, but he does make the play, and that sets up the Aggies perfectly now. Well, the coaching staff talking about it. Bob Owens to our right in the coach's booth talking to Jeff Tisdall on the field. They've made the call. Now, I think if you run the ball here, if you're Chris Salt and you run the ball here, what you're saying is, I'm going to let my defense win the football game. On the other hand, if he throws the football in this situation, I think what he's saying is, we're going to let our offense try to win this football game because if they get the first down here, the game is over. But if they don't and they run the ball, I think they're leaving it up their defense to try to win this one. Defensive unit exhorting the crowd to help them out, make some noise, come to your feet. The pack with a third and 10, I would think you would want to go put uh, Van Dyke on one side of the field alone and go his way. Well, he'll go up to the top of your screen when you get a full field shot of that. He's up alone. Three receivers to the other side. Maxwell looking for Van Dyke. He's covered. He throws over the middle. Incomplete. Boy, Gill had a hand on it, and McHenry is saying that Gill grabbed him coming off the line of scrimmage, but that'll fall on deaf ears. So Nevada will have to punt. Clock stops with the incompletion. We have 2-11, and the Aggies are on fire. 
Well, I love the call by Chris Salt. He's saying, let's win the game right here. And it didn't happen. Of course, we didn't see Gill and McHenry locked up before that. You might be able to from this angle. I don't know. McHenry's 87. McGill is 44. And McHenry says he got held before the ball ever got there. The punt by McLean. Good spiral. Bandy comes up and will drop the ball at the 15. It's loose. He has to go back and cover it. Well, the Aggies need to go 87 yards. They trail by five. Line of scrimmage will be the 13-yard line. It all comes down to this. Nevada's defense a little bit weary, a little bit wounded today. 87 yards with no timeouts in two minutes and three seconds. Now, let's remember, Utah State on the last drive drove about this length in a minute and 57 seconds to score a touchdown, and they didn't use a timeout on that drive, so we know it can be done. Well, if Al Alexander gets loose, maybe the Wolfpack defense has to do what the Aggie defense did earlier. Grab somebody and pull them down. It'll cost you 15 yards, not a touchdown. Three wide receivers, top of the screen, out of the shotgun, you get an end zone look at Mullins. Right side, throws underneath, complete. At the 21-yard line, it is Harrison who needs to go north and south, not east and west. That won't get you what you need. He's well, in the field of play. He should have gotten out of bounds. And he makes another big error by not getting out of bounds to stop the clock because it's 143 and counting down. I mean, he needs to turn that one outside. Valuable time, 135 as Mullins for the shout-out instructions with a no-huddle offense. Going deep. Interception, Hassan was playing center field. He's got it, turning it to the 30. And he will go down in the middle of the field as he just tried to eat the clock up. And that's it, that's the ball game. Ken Watts, the backup guard, makes the stop and Hassan has his fourth interception this year. John L. not happy about it, but the guys on the other side are. Boy, Patrick Mullins just floats this one. And we can hear the Nevada defensive coaches clapping to our right because they know the ball game's over. Wolfpack will go to 7-2 and two on the season, 4-0 oh in the Big West. And he just floated that one to Jalon Harrison. Harrison knew that he had no chance to make that catch. Hassan just played center field on that one, got underneath it, and made the catch. I mean, that was a terrible pass by Mullins. Horrible. Nevada comes in line of scrimmage. Let's see if Maxwell just kneels down three times. He puts his knee down, and the Aggies cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeout, so the clock will wind. So Nevada now has two chances to get to the Las Vegas Bowl and win this conference. They need to either beat Pacific on the road next week, which is our next broadcast, coming to you from Stockton, California on Saturday, or win the final one at home against San Jose State on the final Saturday of the season. And these guys are headed to Las Vegas for the second time. They will, be, uh, they will breathe a sigh of relief when they leave Romney Stadium because offensively, not a great show. Defensively, boy, they staggered around and just didn't get, get beaten today, but they staggered around on some big plays and gave up some big yardage. And that's the key, I think. I think defensively, they have a lot to work on here, a lot to build on, a lot to be proud of. I think defensively, the Wolfpack played great except for about three or four large plays. Well, Maxwell has said we can hear him in knelt our down twice. One more time, and this one will be over. The Aggies with a valiant effort, but just not enough. So Maxwell kneels down. The teams, I think, will shake hands as this one will end in favor of the Wolfpack. It was not easy, and it looked for quite a while that they could cruise, but they end up with a five-point win. So let's go to the sideline. We've got Paul Stewart. And he's got one of the stars of the ball game, defensive linebacker Deshaun Miles. Deshaun, the defense rose to the occasion today. Yeah, I think we played real good. We came we'll out we they, at the beginning of the game. They did some things nice. that we didn't really know, but we adjusted. I think we played a real good game after that. Defense scored a few points. That has to feel good. Yeah, that's the best offense is a great defense. I think we played good this time. We're really proud of ourselves. Okay, great game today, Deshaun. I also have Kenny Miner right here. Kenny? Great game today. I uh, shudder to think what would have happened if we did not have your running game in there today. Uh, I have no. I, I believe we got it done, but I'm just happy to be back. It's tough on an uh, ankle injury. Knowing each play, I'm going out there, I'm in some kind of pain or something. I'm feeling some kind of pain. I can't sit down, take a rest, but I got to keep, keep, I got to keep motion in my ankle. Seemed like the first series you were running a little tentative, checking it out, but then uh, through the middle of the game, you were going. I know it hurt, but you were uh, on fire there. Yeah, I uh, will. 
it was it was a bit of a problem for me running stuff outside a little bit. I had a bit of a problem doing that. So when he when I, I got more explosive running inside, so that's what we stuck to. Kenny, I had you unofficially for about 147 yards and a touchdown. Nice game today. Thank you. Okay, that's back upstairs to you, Dan and Dana. Paul with uh, two of the premier players of this, this afternoon's ball game. Deshaun Miles, the young sophomore who came in with 100 tackles, had more than a handful. And you heard Kenny Miner with over 100 yards once again. He was an important cog in the Wolfpack offense. Nevada wins it 30 to 25 here in Logan, Utah, Romney Stadium. But Dana, they had to struggle their way through. So we'll go on to the next game in the next week. That's right. And the next game is right here. On New